And people at home are thinking, hang on a minute, I can't afford food or fuel or any of this, and they're playing political games. You mark my words. When, when Rochdale is over, the whole of the political uh, landscape is about to change. I just feel it. I've done this long enough. All right. Oh, well, listen, it's it exciting nice to have times, you. scary. Yes, all of that and all of and that and more. surgery. If you've all got right. a medical problem, call. I do. I've yes, I know. We haven't oh. got long enough. Okay. <laughs> Ingrid, no, thank you very much. That is it from me. I'm back. I'm actually doing your show next oh. weekend. Did you know that? Couldn't we find anyone else? No, they no. tried everyone. <laughs> so I'll be back at seven o'clock next weekend. This is Talk TV. This is Talk TV. My friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out. For God's sake, man, well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. David Cameron needs to worry about his own country, and frankly, he can kiss my ass. Yeah. Boom, fantastic. We need a bit more of that in the UK. I can't wait to hear Liz Truss say something like that. She's saying saying what a lot of people think. Not if you can't then... call Hamas terrorists, I can't talk to you. Cut the interview. Fine. Goodbye. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks. It said yeah. nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I, I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. And they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent, that's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? You've been having to fight again for compensation after having to fight to be believed, then fight to get your conviction quashed, to get what's rightfully yours. If Archetypes was as successful as they claim, why is Spotify that paid Harry and Meghan a significant amount of money to produce 13 episodes? Episodes in total, including the Christmas special, willing to hand that over to Limonada to do whatever they want with it. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested. Alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you? But laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. There are no banners calling for and the re release of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no banners, mass. Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march where we can't no, say them on the mass. Sorry, no, I, yeah. sorry, I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, can't. Good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth? is going on in the House of Commons. I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right. Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. Rishi Sunak should have brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised You're by a special counsel. Right. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh. what? <laughs> your your mind. <laughs> it's not our minds, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk CV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth.
Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Cross Talk. One o'clock every weekday. Hello, very good morning to you. It's just after 7 o'clock on Sunday, February the 25th. Thank you very much indeed uh, for your company. Look, it looks very dark this morning, very unusual indeed. But thank you for your company wherever you are around this great country. And thank you very much to the people of Doncaster yesterday for giving us such a great reception. Lovely, lovely, lovely people. Right, great news this morning. It is the Spitfire Challenge charity run today in Sunbury upon Thames. Wow. Good luck. Good luck. Yes, indeed. Wow. Good, good luck to all of those, all of you taking part in that. Well done. Uh, also, today is it's Let's All Eat Right Day. Yep. What? Yep. On a Sunday? No, no, no. Today is Sunday Fun Day. And that means foods on a Sunday have zero calories. It's yep. the law. Uh, yes, yum, yum, yum. Also, happy birthday to Dominic Raab, who is 50. 50? He's only 50. 50 years old today, and Ed Balls, who turns 57 today. So that is our great news. Happy birthday. Let's start today's show, shall we? Today's fascinating facts. So today's fascinating facts. On this day in 1723 was the death of Christopher Wren. Now, as you know, he was a highly acclaimed architect who was responsible for some beautiful buildings, some really beautiful buildings, including St Paul's Cathedral. On this day in 1955, Britain's largest ever aircraft carrier at that time, the Ark Royal, was completed. Now, interestingly, she was the fifth ship of that name to have served the Crown. Or, uh, originally, the, the name, that first ship, was in 1587. It was the flagship that defeated the Spanish Armada in 1588. And on this day in 1972, and I remember this really vividly, miners overwhelmingly voted in favour of a pay settlement after a seven-week strike that seriously affected power supplies. And those are today's fascinating facts. Well, talking of having no lights and getting dressed in the dark, I wouldn't be so rude, would I? Good morning, Dr. Renee. Good morning. You look lovely. Thank you. It was certainly very cold when I got dressed this morning. Was it? Mm. I, I quite liked it. And actually, this morning, when I got up with some horrible hour, the birds were singing. The birds are singing now, which is quite nice, although, you know, it wakes children up earlier. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, I like it because in the depths of winter, when you get up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, it's so miserable. They're twitter -pating. Pardon? The birds are twitter painting. If you say, mm -hmm. if you say. OK, um, let's talk about um, Christopher Wren, because I, I think we don't talk enough about the amazing architecture in this yeah, country. I agree. And St Paul's Cathedral, whenever I look at it, and it's only over there... Stunning. It's absolutely stunning, and I'm very lucky where I live in London, I have an unobstructed view of the Royal Naval College at Greenwich, mm. and of course that was his as well. He was known for his work in the English Baroque style, he rebuilt 52 churches in the city of London after the Great Fire in 1666, obviously the masterpiece St Paul's Cathedral. Other notable buildings include the Royal Hospital Chelsea, the, Oil, the Royal Naval College in Greenwich and the south front of Hampton Court Palace. Yeah, and if you think how beautiful all of those buildings are that you've just described, we are never going to see those built again. And we aren't, are we? No. It's just not going to happen. Well, but well the stunning. king, I, I have to say, the king is very into great architecture and I hope that feeds through. I was looking at all these new houses that are being built. They just lack character. <clears throat> They're little boxes. They all sit next to each other. What happened to actually yeah. our vision, drive, determination to build something fantastic? They're really ugly. And even the ones that have got three, four bedrooms have a literal postage stamp garden. And for three, four, four bedroom houses where you're likely going to have children, a garden is key. You know, chuck so. them out and let them play. <laughs> chuck them out, yes. Uh, shall we talk about the big news this morning? It's all over the newspapers. This is Lee Anderson. Mm. Uh, he's been suspended. This Ridiculous. happened as I was coming back from Doncaster. He's been suspended from the Conservative Party after refusing to apologise for comments aimed at Sadiq Khan. Now, he was doing an interview, and he is the Conservative MP for Ashfield. He was doing this interview, and he said 
Islamists had got control of the mayor of London. Now, Sadiq Khan obviously then refuted that. He described the remarks as pouring fuel on the fire of anti-Muslim hatred. And then the Conservative Party, there was this sort of silence whilst they tried to work mm -hmm. out what on earth they did about it. And now, they did the wrong thing as they always do. Well, so, so really interesting you say that. Why? Oh, OK, look, because we have a problem. We established it yesterday on the show, David, with people calling in, texting in. People are worried about Islam and the extremism. We saw the um, Shawcroft report this week, which actually said that we were not doing enough. We've seen um, MI5 saying that 75% of the threat is coming from Islamic Islam. The evidence is there. And yet prevent is nothing like that. 11%. Yeah. Yeah. So... We, we know that we're failing in dealing with it. The threat is there. We're scared to talk about it. We saw a vote overturned in a way that has never been done before this week in the Houses of Parliament when the Speaker decided to allow protocol to be broken because it was outdated. And why? Because there were mobs on our streets and the, the MPs were scared. So now Sadiq Khan is coming out talking about pouring fuel on anti-Muslim hatred. Mm. And what that will do, and what it's designed to do, is to shut down the conversation that we so desperately need to have. Uh, so, so that's a really important point, and I agree totally, because essentially, he didn't, he, he said, and he clarified what he said, I, because he was asked, have Islamists taken control of this country? He said, no, they haven't. But I believe they've got control of Khan, and they've got control of London. Now, Khan is well known. You and I spoke, you've done some research I into have. Khan and his associations. Perhaps you'd like to enlighten us. So his associations with people who are really part of this group that we're worried about go back a long way. So in 2003, he appeared at a conference alongside Sajil Abu Ibrahim, a member of the band Al Muhajirun. Mm. He was actually the chair of the Muslim Council of Britain. I didn't know that. No, exactly. And in his capacity as the chair, he argued in Parliament that the Muslim Brotherhood cleric, Dr Yusuf al Karadi, is not the extremist that he is painted as being. Now, there are many more examples of his links. The other one, I think, is with Cage, isn't it? His relationship with extremists ran so deep that he attended events for the jihadist rights group Cage and wrote a foreword for one of their report. Cage has since declared ISIS executioner Jihadi John to be a beautiful man on the BBC. Now, he defends all of this by saying he's a human rights lawyer, so he has to have these contacts. Now, this article, which is quite an interesting one, The Secret Life of Sadiq Khan, was written by Majid Nawaz, who is a Muslim, who was a jihadist extremist. He mm. was in a prison in Egypt, and Khan represented him. So he's very balanced in this article to say, look, he's not an extremist, but some of his friends are a very poor choice. And, and this, for me, goes back to the heart of the matter, because what happened to freedom of speech in this country. And I think there is a real problem. We talked about it yesterday. We talked about these radical elements in any religion, actually. And to counter all of that, we need to have an open, honest conversation about what is happening in this country. Well, and we've seen these demonstrations that are holding London to ransom. Exactly. So it is right that our parliamentarians discuss that. It is. And also, David, we are a Christian country. We're worried about our culture being, you know, denigrated and erased. And we need to be able to have the conversation that when these people who are of a different religion, whatever it is, come to this country, should they not embrace we're not saying get well, you rid know, of your religion, yeah. practice it at home, in your mosques, but should you not embrace the culture that surrounds our main religion? So, so it's really fascinating what's happened. Labour's leapt on this saying it's absolutely outrageous, Lee Anderson needs to go. Then you've got the Lib Dems, I was quite surprised by that. Daisy Cooper also wrote a really stinging rebuke over Lee Anderson. Yeah. Now, for me, the most interesting thing is my social media went bananas yeah. when this was announced. And I can tell you what people are thinking around yeah. the country. They're waking up and saying what has the Conservative Party done? Do you think this will damage them electorally? Yes, I think it will. But I think it's just another part of the jigsaw, isn't it? Where people are feeling completely out of touch with the party that they once felt supported their views. And I think that's what it's doing. I think people are scared, people are worried, and they want to have the conversation. And once again, I mean, even yesterday we saw we're streeting talking about mm. Islamophobia, you know, shutting down the conversation. The moment you put phobia 
on the end of any word, and we've seen it in many different debates, you try to shut so, down. So there was another very interesting comment that someone said, it's not Islamophobia because a phobia it's is an, an irrational fear. Mm -hmm. And But this is not an irrational fear. Yeah. It's actually looking at an emerging problem from a small minority of people mm -hmm. who are radicalised. Phobia is designed to weaponize language to suppress people exactly that's what it's so about. so let me throw this out to you this morning i know you feel very passionately about this uh, given uh, all of the comments that are coming back to me do you think the conservative party was right to sack lee anderson what happened to freedom of speech in this country? You can call us 03444991000. You can also send us a WhatsApp to that number. That's very clever. Uh, you can text the word talk in your message to 87222. Also, you can tweet us uh, at Talk TV, leave a space, hashtag Breakfast Doctors. Really, really keen to hear from you on that. Now, something that you and I have talked about a great deal, which is men and women's brains do work differently. Definitely. Uh, definitely. <laughs> so men have much bigger brains, according to this. Uh, <laughs> No, I know it doesn't say that. Um, so the brains of men and women operate differently, and scientists have shown for the first time. So it shows that actually sex matters in how people think and behave. Of course, this is quite a controversial uh, topic, but I think all of us know that this is right. So apparently this includes the default mode network, an area of the brain thought to be neurological centre for self, important in introspection and retrieving personal memories. Also, changes in the limbic system, it, which is implicated, as we know, in emotion, in memory, in deals with sexual stimulation, striatum. I'm not at all surprised by this. No, and anybody with half a brain, whether it's male or female, shouldn't be surprised by this either. I said, look, we didn't need MRIs when men are from Mars <laughs> and, and Women Are From Venus was written. You know, and if you read that book, you get to understand that the inherent differences that being bathed in testosterone in the warm or being bathed in mm. oestrogen make to us. And it's an important, it's an important difference. You know, it does make women more nurturing because they generally bring up the children. It Correct. makes men more aggressive because they have to go out and supply the goods, as it were, to keep the family going. Yeah. And I know that sounds very basic. And also men are programmed to procreate. <laughs> That's basically yes. their job. Yes, of course. <laughs> and women are programmed to nurture. Exactly. You know, we knew this. There's no such thing as gender, it's sex. Well, There's well, female well, I, and men. But, but there are some really nice things in here. Women are better at reading comprehension <laughs> and writing ability. I would agree with that they on average. They get dyslexia less. But they also, and this is the bit that men around the country will know, they have very good long-term <laughs> memories. So you can't get away with anything, ever. 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 Absolutely. But I can't remember what I did last week. No, but I will remember remember a conversation I that I had a year ago. With said, me. Well, hang on a minute. You said <laughs> then. This is what you do to me all the time. You said, well, actually, in 1989, you said <laughs> something quite to the contrary. And men, on the other hand, and this is true, have stronger visual and spatial awareness. That's why we can drive and you can't. And we can park and you can't. Also, we have better working memory. So that's interesting, a different yes. type of memory. And that is certainly true for me, where I have much, very good short-term memory, but terrible long-term memory. Yeah. And you're not going to get any argument from me. I think the, this is nature. And whatever anybody wants to do, you cannot erase nature. No, and d uh, what is interesting in terms of future research, women, obviously, we know are more likely to be clinically depressed. Why is that? Is that to do with oestrogen? Also, men, because they tend to be more risk-taking, they tend to be more at risk of alcoholism, for example, or drug dependency, and addiction, and addiction yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So that's really interesting. Uh, let's move on <coughs> to this doctor who is on the cusp of a cancer cure. This is a Nobel Prize winning oncologist. Really amazing, the dedication from some of these doctors. Dr Wu uh, has been obsessed with the immune system. Uh, she watched a bone marrow transplant as a medical intern and she drew a picture at that time of her curing cancer and that was her goal in life that's what she wanted to do essentially she's pioneered the research behind a new frontier of personalized cancer vaccines which are producing unprecedented results in clinical trials i think what we have spoken about a great deal is how fast medicine is evolving mm -hmm. it seems that cancers seem to be very individualized to different people 
she is basically taking genetic data, programming it into the vaccines, and they find that essentially by tweaking it, you can make your own body fight those cancer cells. That's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. It makes sense, doesn't it, that the best way to beat a disease is for your body to do it itself. Instead of horrible chemotherapy, <coughs> horrible radiotherapy, uh, and so on. I do think that what everybody's going to have to get their head around, though, going forward with this kind of medicine, is eventually this is going to lead to each one of us being a gen genetic database participant where everything about us is known and and monitored now i know that that sounds that it's probably for the good but we have to also consider what harms there could be in that and it could be as simple as things like well no david you can't have any car insurance because you're mm. going to die next week you know or mm. you're going to get this disease so i do think we have to think about the ethical how do you feel about that yeah I, it worries me a little bit i think that you know Sometimes we don't want to know these things. No. Also, we don't want big corporations to But then, but then if I knew I was going to die in 10 years' time or five years' time or tomorrow... You might go on a cruise permanently. I would definitely go on a cruise permanently. <laughs> Goodbye, I'm off, you know. So, actually, knowledge is power. But everybody's different. Everyone is different. Not everybody does want to No, know. but what I think is fascinating, and this shows the paradigm shift in medicine, so essentially they were looking for vaccines and they were targeting the wrong places. And so suddenly they had this idea to look at what they call neoantigens, proteins that form on cancer cells. Mm. And then they use the immune system of the body to attack those neoantigens. So, so that's what we see in science a great deal. We go along a certain path until mm. someone has that eureka moment and says, oh, hang on a minute, let's do this. Mm. And I just think that's absolutely brilliant. And, and these sort of people, they sit in the background, they do their work, they get... We, we've interviewed really people, passionate about it. Really passionate. It, yeah. And we've interviewed people, haven't we, like last week, yeah. who have been working on these things. And it all goes behind the scenes, no one takes any notice, but of course, enormous pride in their work as well. Yeah, and I mean, look, these people are doing this for the right reason. You know, they're doing it because they want to cure people of horrible diseases, and we must always remember that. What we must always keep control of, however, is the spin-off from that. I, I, I agree. Also, they've been looking at melanoma patients. They were vaccinated with a seven-shot course of these individualised neoantigen vaccines. They're also looking now at pancreatic cancer. Yeah. So lung cancer, for example. This could be game-changing, and I find that absolutely fascinating. Time has beaten us. I've got lots more, though, <laughs> uh, for later on. Uh, very quickly, was the Tory party right to sack Lee Anderson? I wonder. The number 0344 499 1000. Send us WhatsApp to that number as well. Also, uh, you can text us. Text the word talk in your message to 8722. You can also tweet us at Talk TV. Hashtag Breakfast Doctors and Dr. Renee in her fabulous dress will be all over that. This <laughs> is Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I, I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. And they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, is it? There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> 
There are no banners calling for the re release condemn, of the hostages. They will not there are no banners, mass. Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march when we condemn the mass. Sorry, no, I'm yeah. sorry. I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you can't. Good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names. The New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth is going on in the House of Commons? I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right, Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. Richard Soon actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised You're by a special counsel. Right. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> my your mind. <laughs> it's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Welcome back to Talk Today with me, David Bull. Uh, we were talking about freedom of speech in this country. I'm just expressing an opinion. That shirt is awful. Thanks very much. Very <laughs> much. Thanks very much for that. Uh, I think someone else, I think the threat of Islam pales into insignificance next to your sh terrible shirt, David. Thank you very much for that. Uh, John in Lincolnshire, one of our regulars. Good morning to you. Good morning, doctors. Sorry it's dark down south. Come back to sunny Doncaster. Bright, frosty calm this morning north of Lincoln. Could almost believe all is well with the world. By the way, David. Christopher Wren was one of the founding members of the Royal Society with Newton, with Hook and with Halley. Very good. Love that. Thank you very much. Indeed. We're talking about Lee Anderson. Was the Conservative Party right to sack Lee Anderson? I'm guessing from your messages you're not very happy with that decision. Um, Lots of you getting in touch. Dee, good morning to you. Dee says, hello, David and Rene. Lee Anderson should be reinstated immediately. He speaks for the majority of the population. And guess what? His brain is intact. The loony left need to go into obscurity and never return ever. The loony left idiots are ruining our country, along with those protesters who have no intention of integrating into our society. Uh, good morning, David and Rene. Victoria says in North Yorkshire, good morning to you. Thank goodness for your programme showing this issue in its true light. The only freedom of speech in this country is for those in the minority. Khan is a dictator with his own ideology for this country. Everything Rene has said on this issue this morning is incredibly true. Um, how bizarre. How bizarre, that's very nice, isn't it? <laughs> I also have from James Cole, you guys restore my faith in common sense. Your opening statements on the position we are in with the conversation on Islam are spot on. Rene's assessment on phobia being used to shut down conversation is so true. Jackie says, the further a society drifts from the truth, the more they will hate the people who speak it, which was an Orwell quote. And, you know, my, my son asked me the other day whether or not I thought Orwell was a time traveller. It is very interesting, mm, isn't it? That's that, a great question. That someone has been able to predict so much of what we are now witnessing mm. from so long ago. And well, that's right, absolutely. Animal Farm, all pigs are equal apart from some pigs. <laughs> Yeah, if you remember and, that. And when you're not of use anymore, you take yourself to the knacker's yard. Exactly. Um, Cooperman says the Conservative Liberal Democrat Party has shown its true <laughs> colours. Cowed, spineless, socialist, appeasing and pathetic. I despise the party now as much as the Labour, the Lib Dems, the SNP and the Greens. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Right, let's move on to this morning's uh, papers, I'm delighted to say. Julian Drucker joins us this morning without his leather jacket. Mm. Uh, Julian is a Five News correspondent. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here. Good morning, doctors. Good morning. I'd say it with a little more enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> really nice to see you, actually. Yeah. I'm surprised you're not sporting a leather jacket. I know, I just thought it was not. Summer? Yeah. yeah, summer, yeah. yeah. Um, how have things been? Pretty good, busy. Yeah. I mean, election year, isn't it? Um, Indeed. Well, we think, well, we think so. Well, so so when is it. the election then? Well, I assume last we heard October, isn't it? They don't want it to be November because it's well, too close to the American so there's a rumour going around that it will be May. It's possible. It is possible. Everything's possible. But with your political hat on, if you were yes. advising the Prime Minister, when would you say to call the election? Presume as late as possible. I mean, not, not <laughs> January. 2013? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> November. Or, Dece or, December or December was well. December was okay in twenty nineteen, wasn't there? Um, it worked well for the Tories. What about but... turnout in December? Well, it was okay. What last was global time, wasn't it? warming? 
Probably yeah, exactly. Fine. That, that's always the problem. Well, isn't it, January the terrible months because turnout will be low. But December, everyone's so busy with presents and getting ready for Christmas. I just wonder whether that does work. Well, it was okay. I mean, you couldn't have it in January because it would mean a campaign over Christmas. Yes, and that's nobody, very true. Nobody actually. would tolerate that. No, fine. Uh, Julian, just before we start with the stories you've chosen, let's look at the front pages mm. this morning. If you are just waking up, the Sunday Times. This sort of uh, continues. I know you're going to talk about this. Bodyguards uh, for three female MPs as the safe fears rise. Three female politicians have actually been given taxpayer-funded bodyguards and cars because of growing concerns about MP safety. The women have had their security upgraded. Um, Tom Tugendhat, the security minister, has been working with the Home Office, the police and parliamentary authorities because of the risk to members of parliament. Uh, the front page of the Sunday Telegraph this morning, uh, same story, bodyguards for MPs as extremism threat rises. What kind of country are we living in when democratically elected people have to be protected. The mail this morning. This is a really interesting story. Hypocrite Rainer's 48,000 profit on a council house sale. This is Angela Rayner. She's been uh, accused of hypocrisy. She made £48,000 500 profit on her ex-council house. The reason this is interesting, she bought it under the right to buy scheme, which was implemented by Margaret Thatcher. So, which I think was a great policy. Where it went wrong is they didn't build enough houses. When you sold one, you should buy, build another one. But the point is it got people onto the housing ladder. So she has made a tidy profit off that, but guess what? She's trying to stop the right to buy. And so many people calling her a hypocrite uh, this morning in that paper. The Observer this morning, Islamophobia, Starmer turns on the Tories over toxic rhetoric. Keir Starmer has accused Rishi Sunak of harbouring extremists in his party after a prominent MP was suspended for inflammatory comments about the London mayor. Uh, other senior Conservatives face condemnation over the toxic rhetoric. This is about Lee Anderson that we've been talking about uh, this morning, but obviously the Observer weaponising that somewhat. The Sunday Express, Rishi, £5 billion to fire up the engine of the North. Big policy, this from Rishi Sunak. He vowed last night to revitalise Britain's forgotten regions by pumping almost £5 billion into improving transport links. Um, where have you been? <laughs> uh, what are you, why is this new? Uh, the Prime Minister is going to use cash saved by scrapping the northern leg of HS2 to upgrade roads, rail, bus services in red wall areas. Well, I'll tell you what. How about putting some money into the east of England? The train services are appalling in the east of England. I went yesterday to Doncaster, as you know. The train was amazing. It was an hour and a half. It was comfortable. It was great uh, but we have nothing like that in the east or in, i think in uh, east west connectivity don't get me started but david as you know when i left here last week or whenever to go over to city airport i had to get two trains and a bus replacement service to get to london city airport from london which Bridge. is there <laughs> which is there it took me an hour yeah well don't start me on that and sadiq khan closes all the lines over the weekend so i can never get anywhere after this show uh, let's move on from that uh, the daily star this morning you're the devil in disguise you are. Thanks. Um, apparently, sick fraudsters have conned nuns <coughs> out of a small fortune by using AI to pose as bishops to fund their... Oh, I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. The Julian, two men in the room are laughing. Sorry. It's quite funny. It's sad. It's sad. Is it funny or sad? Uh, funny com a combination. Yeah, a combination. Uh, the Sunday People this morning, 61 million lottery winners feud with the brother... So I'm, there are lots of questions I have about this. So essentially, the Euro Millions winner Debbie Nuttall has been embroiled in a feud with her younger brother for more than 20 years. She, she won 61 million quid uh, last week, but missing from the celebrations is her estranged sibling, Glenn Noon. They haven't spoken in decades, uh, and obviously they've tried to patch things up, according to the dad of four, um, but uh, to no avail. Glenn, who suddenly really misses his sister and wishes they could <laughs> actually just build bridges. Thank why you. do people go public? I mean, this is <laughs> that's a I mean, much it's ridiculous, bigger. isn't it? That's a much. Why do people go? Because public? they're lent on by the people who run the lottery or other lotteries yeah. or whatever to go public. Because obviously, it's good for them. But there's there's no benefit. No, to, no. I mean, why would you do it? And yeah. the moment that you do, this is what starts happening. Exactly. Well, luckily, I, it's not something I'm going to have to face. So, <laughs> so, so I'm going to put that to the back of my mind. Uh, and the sun on the Sunday, big story, one for you, Julian. Uh, uh, this is about strictly loved up. Strictly loved up. This is. Strictly, Bobby's Brazier and Ellie Leach enjoy a late-night tryst. 
Ooh. He carries an overnight bag into a flat at 11.15 in the evening. That is a late tryst, isn't it? It's very, very <laughs> late and naughty. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's the front page of The Sun I think on Sunday. needed somewhere to stay. Well, yeah. Uh, Julian, let's go to your yes. papers. What have you chosen as your first? So story? the Lee Anderson story, huge, obviously. He's known as 30p Lee, isn't he, yesterday? Just remind us why he's called that. He said people could live on 30p, <laughs> didn't he? Wasn't it that? You he know, did say that. He yeah. did, yeah. Um, the, what was trending yesterday afternoon was P45 Lee as a joke. doesn't really work because he obviously hasn't, doesn't work. hasn't lost his job. He's just, um, you know, now an independent, isn't he, uh, technically. Um, but uh, this is in every single paper. Uh, suspended from the party yesterday. A big row over racism now. Um, and, you know, lots of Tory ministers coming out yesterday um, criticising what he mm. said. I mean, and then he apologised. Um, well, he'd, I'm not sure he apologised. He said, he said, I understand why the position is untenable and they're slightly different things. I don't mm. know. I felt it was quite a grovelling, um, I'm in the wrong here. I don't think he thinks that he's in the wrong. But when I read it, you know, that I can understand that they absolutely had to take the whip away. I, I think it was fairly Did grovelling. they have to take the whip away? No. No. Of course Did not. they? There's no rule saying that they had to. I mean, it was just... They've decided to do that. I, I mean, think they can, they're they can, mad. They can reinstate it, can't they? I think they're just... utterly, utterly mad. They're crazy. I think they're utterly crazy mm -hmm. because actually the whole point of a party, even in the one I'm in, we have differing opinions on certain things and that's well, and good. Don't forget, and that's great for democracy. Don't forget the Tories are a very broad church, David. Well, so we're told. And we know there are seven different factions in that party anyway. <laughs> but of course we've got all of these people coming out. This mm. shows, doesn't it, that politicians don't really know what to do until they look at the optics of it and wonder, ooh, I wonder how this is going to play out. Because you've then got Grant Shapp saying this is a matter for the party, but yes. you've got all the other parties jumping on this as well. Daisy Cooper, I mentioned, uh, um, Yvette Cooper, sorry, the Shadow Home Secretary, said Lee Anderson's words about Sadiq Khan are Islamophobic. Sajid Javid also called his comments ridiculous. Gavin Barwell, who I know well, said the remarks were a despicable slur. No, it doesn't fit with your narrative, but Gavin. this is because they are all terrified of a very big vote yep. that might walk out of the door. There's nothing else to this. They equally know the threat that we face. They're being told by MI5 the threat that we face. They're watching it on our streets every, mm. every weekend. But they're terrified of that vote mm voting with its feet. So so also, what did you make of the chaos in the Commons the other day? Because here we go again, they're yeah. playing politics and actually that's not what people around the country want to see. People in Doncaster are not interested in their stupid infighting. It was kind of impenetrable, wasn't it? I don't think people really understood they what didn't. was going on. It's kind of gone away because obviously it happened on, what was it, Wednesday? But you know it's coming back. Well, the SNP yeah, are I mean, tabling another motion. Um, I can't remember how many MPs have gone against Lindsay Hoyle. It's in the 70s, 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 I don't know yeah. why it has to get to And apparently... Um, well, it doesn't have to get to anything. This it's, not, it's not like a 1922 No, thing, so, that, so they, there is no mechanism to but, get rid of the Speaker. But apparently Rishi wants it to get to 91 before he acts. Right. Why 91? That seems... I think it's 10%. But he can't right. act. So it doesn't matter because well, he then, can't No, act. no, but then they can call for a no-confidence vote. But they could call for that today. Yes. Yes. And in fact, if you look back in history, just few, a very few letters triggered that. And, yeah. and speakers have, have stood down as a result. Mm. I mean, again... They could redo the vote, first of all, couldn't they? They could would redo be, the vote. They could redo the, do the vote, that's Properly. right. Properly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't immediately do that. I don't know why Hoyle didn't announce that immediately. Yes. He could have actually, when he realised what was going on and how toxic it was becoming, he could have said, I've I made think, a mistake, yeah. let's go back but to But I think he was in the middle of the maelstrom. I don't think he could see what was going on. He wasn't even in the chamber, was he? And then he came back into the chamber when he realised. And the poor uh, deputy speaker was standing there and she, I think she completely lost control mm. of, of what was going on. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just think it's just, it, it doesn't show our democracy. And one of the MPs said this is the mother of all parliaments. Well, it didn't look like it, did it? It just means, you know, the, the Hoyle thing kind of went away. You had the, you know, people projecting from the river to the sea on parliament. That has kind of been obscured now by Lee Anderson's comments. Mm. Um, and I don't, is Lee Anderson going to join the Reform Party? Is that possible? So, so there's another story that Nigel Farage has said he would be a great asset. He would yeah. have gone from th through three parties. He was Labour, wasn't he? Yeah. He was Labour originally, went to the Conservative Party. But from what people are saying this morning, 
look, I'll just read this. Um, who's this? Anna says, he's the only Tory left standing with a set of testicles. <laughs> and that, I think, sums it up. It does. And on the same note, Jamie Stead has said the PM had a chance this week to stand up and make a leader's speech that we will not tolerate this anymore. He didn't. He didn't stand behind Anderson. If the Conservatives weren't finished, they certainly are now. Mm, what do you think? I just want to move away from Lee Anderson's no. testicles. <laughs> well, um, no, but that... He, he is a politician. A they, this is what people are saying. So on the train on the way home, I had people yes. talking to me about this, saying this is absolutely ridiculous. He cuts through, doesn't he? Like, yes. You know, like no other... Because he's real. Yes, yeah. So, you know, they, they lose him at their peril. They're going to... I mean, the red wall well, is gone him. anyway, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know what his. I don't know what the likelihood of him winning under you know. If he, I mean, if don't he forget. I don't know Lee what his Anderson. majority is. This is Lee Anderson who stood down as deputy chairman, one of the seven deputy chairs. Over chairmen, Rwanda. Over yes. Rwanda. So this is a man who tends to stand by his principles, not always. Mm. But although didn't he vote with them exactly, in the end? Exactly. That's because he said that uh, he made this ridiculous comment about people laughing, didn't he? Yeah. You see, so I'm just reading another one here. No, Lee Anderson should not have been sacked. I agree with everything Rene said. We need someone in charge of this country with a backbone who will stand up, in my opinion, uh, to what is a gradual takeover of the country by extreme Muslims. We started going downhill, in my, uh, in my opinion, by allowing uh, various uh, Sharia laws and so on, and endless mosques. My comments will be called racist, the usual word thrown out, but I'm worried the country has gone back now. No one is brave enough to fight to get it back. That's an important point. Mm. Have we reached a tipping point, actually, where people are... And expressing those opinions, are we actually... Is this the, the silent majority saying, right, enough now, let's talk about the state of this country? Well, I guess it's like immigration, isn't it, in the 90s? It was the topic no one was allowed to discuss. I mean, people like Jack Straw will say that was the case, and that led to mm. UKIP, etc. So, you know, if topics are not discussed by MPs, then other parties, etc., will find a way of discussing but this it. Is, and but this is always what happens, Julian, when you try and suppress yeah. views. They go underground and then they either find a way out via another party mm. or politician or just in the ballot box where nobody can bully you, nobody can silence you, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely They right. will reinstate the whip, though, I assume, for Lee Anderson do by you the time think? of the election. I think so. It's not like a Jeremy Corbyn uh. situation where... Why do you I say I think I that? agree with you. No, I think Why? I agree. Because it was just dealt with so quickly what happens yesterday. if he resigns? But is he going to? I listened to his speech. And he would probably lose other media work if he's not as relevant as well. So it's in his interest to stay an MP. Oh, now that was a cynical point I hadn't well. got to. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, very interesting indeed. What do you think this morning? What is Lee Anderson going to do Next, the number 0344 499 1000. Send us a WhatsApp to that number as well. Also, you can text the word talk in your message to 8722. You can tweet us at Talk TV, then leave a space, then hashtag Breakfast Doctors. Julian will be back with more of the papers after this break. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which said yeah. nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I, I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? <laughs> 
what are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on. What just happened? <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> there was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't <laughs> too keen on that. I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> There are no banners calling for the re release of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no the banners, mass. Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march where we can't say them on the mass. Sorry, no. I, yeah. sorry, I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you no, can't. It's good. I'm, no, so, it's I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names. The New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn. What, what is that? What on earth? is going on in the House of Commons. I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right, Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. If Rishi Sunak actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised your special right. character. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> my your mind. <laughs> it's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. to talk today with me, David Bull. Time 7.44 now on uh, Sunday, February the 25th. Lots of messages coming in. Good morning, all. Don't listen to the haters, David. Your shirt is great. Thank you very much indeed. The Lee and... This is Sean in Gloucester. Um, Lee Anderson debacle just proves the Tories are not Conservative. All they've achieved is pushing Lee into the arms of the Reform Party, where he should be anyway. He has far too much honesty to be anywhere else. Wendy has a differing opinion. Racism is not freedom of speech. It's bigotry. Anyone who thinks it's OK needs a one-way ticket to Mars. I don't think racism is OK, but who said that anyone's being racist? We're talking about discussing a problem that MI5 say we have in our country. Hmm. Uh, good morning, Doctor, says Carol. Lee Anderson should not have been sacked. He was saying what so many of us feel. He was a bit clumsy and should not have been personal. Interesting, though, Mr Carnage's rebuttal <laughs> had lots about Islamophobia. Don't agree with it, but nothing about anti-Semitism. Mm. In fact, he's never come out and condemned anti-Semitism. Never asked the hate marchers to tone it down. Uh, Khan is a disgrace. Thank you very much indeed, Carol. Uh, Gillian Drucker's here taking us through this morning's papers. Let's move on and talk mm. about this story you you've chosen in the Times, yes. Tory hopefuls. Here come the Tory hot steppers. This is Tim Shipman. Um, I don't know, if you looked at the uh, odds recently, who is, without looking, who is most likely... Penny to... Morden. It's not, it's Kemi Badenoch. Oh, is it? It, I was, thought one it was one, or, one or the other. Um, so everyone, obviously when Liz Truss became uh, Prime Minister, she did this thing called Fizz with Liz. She would take people out, have champagne with them. Uh, Grant Shapps is now having schnapps with Shapps, <laughs> um, uh, holding drinks. What Kemi having? Uh, I don't know what it's. Uh, I don't know what hers is called. Kemi's only twelve. She can't drink. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what? So what's really interesting? So you say uh, Penny Mordaunt. Um, it, I, I thought she was in the lead. I mean, it's all very close on the odds. Um, but um, Penny Mordaunt, it is saying, wants to change leader now because of her majority. Uh, she sits on a majority that is very, Cause, very slim. Cause it's not about Which, Penny. It's about the country. Yeah. What is her majority? Uh, so, I'm six thousand uh, under it? sixteen thousand in Portsmouth. Oh, yeah. So the suggestion in this Tim Shipman article is uh, she wants to change leader now. It could mean that there's a boost for the Tories, and then she could possibly keep her seat. But otherwise, if they drag it out until November, she, you know, she is seriously she, she's as, right. as is Shaps. Shaps has just eleven thousand in well in Hatfield. Julian, she's right. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't she? Well, it's, I mean, it's about survival for MPs like her. I worry, um, for, <coughs> excuse me, I worry for women if Penny Morden gets it. Why? Because she's into all of the um, <coughs> gender ideology in a big way. I really worry for women. Now, I've met her many, many times. I like her. I think she's solid. gender ideology in a big way. Is she? Yeah. Well, this was, this was a thing when she stood and then yeah. Liz Truss got it. That was uh, mm. the biggest thing against her, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. OK, I'll have a look at that. I wonder what... Who do you think should be a uh, Conservative leader? Let us know your thoughts on that as well. Um, are, there, uh, are there runners and riders in that? No. Uh, Grand Chaps, 33 to 1. Robert Jenrick, uh, 16 to 1. Swella Braverman, 8 to 1. And then Penny Morden's 4 to 1. See, Penny I Baden think Braverman is popular with, the, with the grassroots. Yeah. 
Uh, Kemi Badenoch is six to four. I mean, these are sort of silly odds, mm. so she's very <coughs> likely to get it uh, based mm. on Kemi is um, Gove's mm. person. They fell she? out, though, didn't they, I think? They did fall out, but she is a Gove, you know, Gove a Irish. protégé. Yeah, but who wants the job anyway if they lose? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> ten years in the wilderness. Yeah, well, quite. Well, don't, forget, don't forget, at the last election, when the Tories got an 80-seat majority... Mm. Um, Thanks to people standing down, just adding that. True. Mm. We were told that Labour would not be back in power for 15 years. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, that's very true, actually. But mm. look how the mighty have fallen. Mm. And they seem very good at actually losing... How many by-elections have we had now? I think now Ta we don't have elections. We just have a by-election. Yeah, we have a rolling by-election. Another one, of course, in Rochdale on Thursday, which will be very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about <laughs> it's the most anarchic by-election ever mm. seen. I don't want to say, gosh, that's in, this Thursday. Yeah, right. okay. uh, ever seen in this country. And so then you've got really interesting forces, and obviously we're in Perda, uh, but really interesting forces because what happens if Galloway wins, for example? What do, what message does that send? Mm. Um, we shall see as that uh, as that rolls out, and I'll talk about those candidates uh, later on. What's next? Uh, the BBC. There's always a BBC story uh, <laughs> every day. Is and it in the Telegraph? This is in the Telegraph. <laughs> yeah. So Tim Davy, the Director General, uh, the Telegraph has uh, obtained a recording uh, from 2021. Uh, he was Director General then, wasn't he? Mm. Uh, but he said that the BBC. Uh, he said staff should be proud of being progressive this is what he said okay then that's fair enough they walk the tightrope yes culture was but um that is sort of taking a political position it is being argued uh, so it is something you shouldn't have said how about making some programs people want to watch <laughs> yes just a thought yes how about going to a <laughs> subscription model so that people can choose whether they want to watch you it's this kind of thing that makes people's blood boil because mm. actually what you want it's a tax we pay for it and what people want is programs that they can watch increasingly and obviously i used to work there and i was a huge fan and advocate of the bbc i just think it's lost its way mm. i used to work there as well i mean it's um wh Me why too. is he making these political <laughs> no, we comments did. we all did um yeah, so this is, and Priti Patel, who is not a Tory contender, although possibly could be for some people, uh, she's saying BBC once again has serious questions to answer over their political bias. But account. maybe that was 21, maybe he's changed his mind possible, because though. obviously maybe the licence fee is focusing his mind as well. They know they've got big problems. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a non story, don't yeah. you? Well, it's a, it's a left wing position, left -wing isn't it? Position, he is, yeah. is outlining, but yeah. Um, mm. But that is, that is the BBC story of the day. <laughs> OK, let's move on to Bridget Jones. I know, it's back. Who? who what? It's, sorry, she's back. Is uh, but she? The, the film is she's back. she's had some work done. What? Um, so there hasn't been a movie for eight years. I, didn't, I mean, I remember the last one. How many were there? Two? So this, this will be the fourth film. I missed um, three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, the book was a huge deal. But so the like first one was ago. absolutely yeah. brilliant. It was. Oh, it was brilliant. Big um, knickers. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna film it in uh, in May this year. Isn't the book a bit dated now? And this idea, I mean, she was deemed to be overweight. I mean, she wasn't really overweight. A bit like Love Actually with the Martine McCutcheon character. Do you think it's out of date? Well, it's just that there were jokes made about Well, you're Martine. not allowed to say anything anymore, are <laughs> yeah. you? So everything's out of date. These women were, were only very, very slightly overweight. But she, what was, I that think was a joke. But what then. was brilliant about Bridget Jones was she's like every normal woman who basically tries very hard to go to the gym and then finds fails at that and then sits there eating stuff and then she has a bad date, she drinks wine. All of that is completely normal. Completely. Yes. Yeah. That's why, oh, that's, and that's why. And that's why people like it. Yes, and that's why I love that you know, character. It's girl next door. Yes. Yeah. But also, I quite like the Firth character in that as well, because he was a bumbling fool. And, and like most men are bumbling fools. I liked it. It's we, the difference in the brain, you know. It's the difference in the brain, that's right. And that's why we can park and you can't. Um, <laughs> I can't remember which character died. Was it the uh, Colin Firth character, Mark Darcy, or was it the Hugh... No, it was Hugh Grant's character died. Don't the spoil movies. it. Well, this has been out for many years. Right. I think. Um, so so w this is the... F what happens in this, this film? Is, this is the fourth one. Um, uh, and it's just the same again. <laughs> Isn't it? Basically, That's roller coaster, it. love life, you know, um, Chardonnay, etc., etc. Do you know she's there's 54 been four now. Home Alones? Have they? They've had to change the boy. <laughs> yes, yeah. So also, at she uh, Renee Zellweger has has changed quite a lot. Quite a lot. Yes. Mm. Uh, she married a British guy, didn't she? She got very slim. Yeah, yes. she had a lot of work done as well. Yeah, an Alleg awful lot. Allegedly. Well, oh, why I didn't they? Beyond <laughs> why did they not go for a British actress in the first place? It was always. I mean, her accent's very good, but very always, good. that was always the debate. And we do have it? some very good British actors. Yeah. Yeah. But she yeah. was brilliant in that first yes. one, particularly. She's yeah. a brilliant name. When did that come out? Do we know? 
Uh, early 2000s, wasn't it? Was the it? Uh, first yeah, movie. Brilliant name, yeah. 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 Spelt yeah. differently to you, no? No, same. Oh, same, is yeah. it? Oh, very common. Um, <laughs> Not on talk TV, though, because... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was spicy. <laughs> Anything it? else from you, young man? Um, well, there's just, you know, as I said, election year. Um, it feels like there should be more momentum in all... Yeah. But it's parts. building. Well, it's building, but we don't have a date. And um... No, the reason we don't have a date is they have no idea how to get out of this mess. They're waiting for the next budget... That is also what the MPs course, are waiting yes, yeah, for. Yeah. That is, so I, that's happening well, when I'm away on holiday. There's going to so be an sweet. autumn one as well, isn't there? It's thought. Do you not feel that there's an argument to go before the local elections? Yes. They, well, they're going to get a drubbing, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So, I mean... Um, so what they're waiting for is to see, once inflation hits 2%, which yeah. I think it will, mm. they can then say, right, we've achieved that. There'll be some fiscal headroom. They'll give tax cuts and hope that everyone is stupid enough to have forgotten how we got in this mess in the first place. It's possible. I mean, if they go in October, it means the Tories don't have a conference, um, which is mm. not great for, you know, people who work at for the conferences. For journalists. Yeah, and for journalists. <laughs> um, I don't know about other parties having conferences. But, but isn't the conference important for their coffers? Yes, but I thought apparently, apparently it, it isn't. On, well, it, yes, for the Conservative Party, definitely. It's very expensive to attend mm. that. Other parties... It's Less much so. cheaper, <laughs> much cheaper. But November will be dominated by the US election in which, you know... That's a really good point yeah. as well. So does that make it more likely or less likely? It makes it less likely because there's a feeling, isn't there, that if Mr Trump gets in, you know, um, you wouldn't want a UK election 10 days after, you know, the world order changing too much over, mm. over 10 days. Interesting. Julian, thank you very much thank indeed. You so much. Lovely thank to you. see you. Julian Drucker there, Five News correspondent. Let's take some calls though. Uh, Brian is in Bournemouth. Good morning to you. Good morning, David. Hi. And hello, uh, the other guest as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call her the other guest. Uh, good morning, Rene. Morning. Sorry, yeah, carry on, yeah. Brian. Yeah, yeah, I love your show, by the way, as well, David. Oh, so, thank uh, you. Yeah, first time speaking to you, so, yeah, good morning, David. Good um, morning, good morning. What's on your mind yeah, this morning? Yeah, Lee Anderson. Yeah, I've watched uh, just recently the video going back a couple of times now, and he's, he's not racist at all, mm. what he's saying. And he is wrong to, to, to be sacked, and I think it's a knee-jerk reaction, what your guest was saying this morning. I think the whip will be reinstated. Um, when? And yeah, should... When will they reinstate it? Just after he I, joins I, I, another party. <laughs> yeah, precisely, precisely. So, so, so yeah. that's really interesting. In terms of that, do you? Why did they take the whip away? <clears throat> did they panic? Were they pushed into it? Was it he, political he's, forces? It's panic. It's panic. Yeah, yeah. And if, if the word racist is banded around too many times now, it's just a, a flippant throwaway word. Mm. Uh, everything these days is just racist, racist, racist. Yeah. When it's not. When I listened to that video of Lee Anderson back a couple of times this morning again, you clearly hear him say, I believe, I believe. And, and that is... A, it's and an opinion. The, exactly. <laughs> what happened to freedom of speech? Brian, thank you very Brian, much indeed. You. Wayne is in Epsom. I believe in Surrey. Hello there. Hello there. Mm -hmm. What's, what, are you, what are your thoughts this morning? I think it's just another example of the anti-white racism in the media. We, we had it over the Black Lives Matter. Um, the BBC was putting a film on about somebody flying over some northern football club with White Lives Matter, mm. and they said that that was racist to say that White Lives Matter, but it's OK to say that Black Lives Matter. Well, and, 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 you're and differentiating yeah. between colours is racism. You're, you're absolutely right, but in the critical race theory ideology, don't forget, there is a belief that black people can't be racist. <laughs> yes, they can. But if you're white and you complain to the police that a black guy's been doing things that he shouldn't do to you, they will not investigate. So, so let me ask you, Wayne, in terms of this, was it the right move by the Conservative Party or have they made a huge blunder? I think they've made a huge blunder because I can't see the difference between Rishi and any of the other leaders. They're all the same. They're all Magnolia. And what, I don't know how you normally vote, but has, has it changed your thoughts on how you might vote at the next election? Well, yeah. I mean, our MP's not standing again because he's got issues that he needs to deal with outside. Sure. Um, and, and we've got Gina Miller, 
um, she's not going to get in because she doesn't think we know what we're talking about. But, this, this is her fair you know, and just, I think. It's fair and true party. Mm. Um, yes, she, yes, hardly. <laughs> Which is you neither. Know, <laughs> well, we, well, that's for yeah. you to... to yeah, that's your opinion. Uh, right. Yeah. So, so, but, but, but just... So where you live, what do you think people are going to be saying in Epsom, in Surrey, about this decision? I think that you're going to find the people that have got an IQ in double or treble figures are going to say it's the wrong thing. The usual sort of munchkins that sort of go along with the media, they're going to say, oh, yeah, he must be racist because that's what it says in the media. Interesting stuff. Thank it's you. Very, very depressing. It is very depressing. Uh, thank you very thank you. much uh, indeed. Lots of other messages coming in. I expect Jackie. Good morning to you. Jackie says I expect that Mr. Anderson is a Brexit MP. It's not all about Brexit. Um, doctors, why didn't well, why didn't Khan resign? Oh, I've just lost that one. Why didn't Khan resign when he said white families don't represent London? I found that to be racist. Yes. So it wasn't actually Sadiq who said that to be for. To be fair, it was on the website for, for um, TFL, I yeah. think, and a comment had been made and it had been crossed through, but nobody can attribute that to Sadiq himself. Yeah, so many messages, actually. So many. Um, interesting. Many of you, it, it seems the vast majority of you are on the side of Lee Anderson. So the question I'm asking today, were the Tory party right to sack Lee Anderson? What happened to freedom of speech in this country? Get in touch, 0344 499 1000. You can also send us a WhatsApp to that number as well. You can text us, text the word talk and your message to 8722. Also, you can tweet us at Talk TV, leave a space, and then it's a hashtag uh, breakfast doctors. Stay exactly where you are still. Lots more to come. This is Talk TV. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Well. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? <laughs> What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh. It's carry on what <laughs> just happened. Ooh, whoa, miss it. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> There are no banners calling for and the they will release not of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no Hamas. banners, Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march not, when no, it comes to no, Hamas. No, sorry, no, I'm yeah. sorry, I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't. Good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth? is going on in the House of Commons. I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. All right, Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. If Richard Sunak should have brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised by a special right. counsel. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. 
What? Your mind. It's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr. Collins. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Matter. To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Cross Talk. One o'clock every weekday. Hello, very good morning to you. It's just after 8 o'clock now on Sunday, February the 25th. I'm David Bull. This is Talk Today. Thank you very much indeed for your company. Great news if you are just waking up this morning because it is the Spitfire Challenge charity run taking place in wow. Sunbury. Yeah, wow. wow. Sunbury upon Thames. Very good luck to all of you taking part in that charity run today. Also, today is Let's All Eat Right Day. I yeah. assume you have to yeah. eat really healthily. I say no because it's Sunday. It's Sunday fun day and calories don't count on a yeah. Sunday. That's my argument. And happy birthday to uh, Dominic Raab, who is just 50. And Ed Balls, who is 57. Very happy birthday to both of you. Yes, let's start today's show, shall we? Today's fascinating facts. So today's fascinating facts. On this day in 1723 was the death of Christopher Wren. Now, as you will know, he was a highly acclaimed architect and he was responsible for some incredibly beautiful buildings here in London, including St Paul's Cathedral, also uh, the Royal Naval College at Greenwich. On this day in 1955, Britain's largest ever aircraft carrier at that time, the Ark Royal, was completed. She was actually the fifth ship of that name to have served the crown. Originally, the first flagship was in 1587. It defeated the Spanish Armada in 1588. And on this day in 1972, miners overwhelmingly voted in favour of a pay settlement after a seven-week strike that seriously affected power supplies in this country. And those are today's fascinating facts. Joining me this morning, Dr. Renny Hunter-Camp, who looks like she's going to dinner. Um, <laughs> you look very fabulous this morning. Well, thank you so yes, much. Yes, you really do. Uh, by the way, also, do you remember that, the, the minor strike? Yes, of course. It, it, it's, I'm as amazed it said seven weeks when I re uh, mm -hmm. looked it up this morning, but actually it felt much longer as... When I was mean, that? 72? Yeah, so I was a child and I remember candles and having... So do I. Cut do you remember? We always had candles in the house yeah, because there might be tiny. a power cut. Me well, you were tinier than me. Yeah, so. I was. But I remember it vividly. Also, on this day in 1978, you'll like this one, Princess Margaret and Roddy Llewellyn left for holiday on the island of Mustique. She was a girl. She, so <laughs> I wish I'd met her. I wish I'd met her. She, Everything I've read about her, I, I mean, like. she lived her life, didn't mm. she? And, and certainly the depiction in The Crown as well. Do you she, know that apparently her eyes were violet? Were they? Mm. Every, well, anyway, I wish I'd met her. Um, on this day in 1982, the ECHR, the European Commission on Human Rights, ruled that corporal punishment in schools was against human rights convention. Never did me any harm, let me tell you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure we should have to um, physically beat children to make them fall into line. I tell you what, it was the <clears throat> fear of it. So we yeah, had, at school, okay. we had the slipper, we had the cane, and it was the waiting outside the headmaster's office that was terrifying. It wasn't the punishment, it was the rest of it. Anyway, it shows my age, doesn't it? By the way, also, on this day in 2013, Daniel Day-Lewis was the first person to win Best Actor three times. He's a superb... But he won it for a film I really didn't like. Which was? Lincoln. Oh, I liked Lincoln. Did you? I thought yeah. it went on and on and on. No Country for Old Men, films yeah. like that. I, I think he's a brilliant actor. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, lots of messages coming in. I'm asking this morning about Lee Anderson. This news broke as I was coming back on the train yesterday from Doncaster. 
and Lee Anderson has had the whip removed. Now, the question I'm asking this morning, do you think the Tory party was right to sack Lee Anderson? And it got me thinking, what happened to free speech? He kept saying, I believe this, I believe that. It was in an interview. Was uh, was the Conservative Party right to sack him? The number 03444991000. You can WhatsApp us on that. Uh, new technology there. You can also text us. Text the word talk in your message to 87222. Also, you can tweet us at TalkTV space hashtag Breakfast Doctors. And lots of you have done just that. Uh, Jean in Malta. Good morning, Jean in Malta. I, I just love weekends with you both. <clears throat> Excuse me. I jump out of bed saying, my David is on. <laughs> oh, that's so kind. Thank you very much indeed. Where are you next weekend? I'm going on holiday. I'm still here. I, yeah, but you're always on holiday. <laughs> I'm never on holiday and I am going on holiday, but I'm doing the talk tomorrow night and then... Tuesday, I'm spending the night at Heathrow because I have an early flight. Uh, Basil has also messaged us on WhatsApp. What on earth has happened to free speech in our country? It seems any mention of Islam or Muslims and we are deemed racist. I am so fed up of the takeover of this country and we need to start claiming it back as a Christian country. I would get rid of Moss. I would definitely get rid of Sharia law and courts, kick out our pathetic government out of party and get... I will just read this. It's not mine. Reform Party in instead. Uh, good morning, Doctors. Dave, you're looking bohemian. Uh, Ren, I've never been called that in my life. Rene, you're looking amazing. Why, thank you. Um, the boil that is this Muslim push in the UK has now been lanced, thank goodness. Now a light is being shone on the issue and the tactics being used mm. to control our parliament and members of parliament as links between Labour and the Muslim community are strong. It will be interesting to see when hacks start investigating these links what they find. Uh, the election is not in the bag yet for Labour. That's a really good point from Angus up north. I have said for a long time that lead isn't what you think it looks like. I just sense it's not, it's a soft lead. And of course we have the Rochdale by-election uh, next week. I just have to um, tell you who is running as our Ali is independent but running with a Labour... It was too late to change it. It was too late to change it, but on the ballot paper there will be a Labour Party logo. Mark Coleman, uh, no description for him. Simon Danshuk uh, for Reform UK. Ian Donaldson from the Liberal Democrats. Paul Ellison for the Conservative Party. George Galloway for the Workers' Party. Michael Howarth, William Howarth, both independent. Guy Otten, the Green Party. Monster Raving, Looney Party. Ravin Rodent, uh, Subortner. And independent is David Tully. Those are the candidates for the Rochdale by-election taking place on Thursday day of a next week. Right, let's talk more about these big political stories. Uh, joining us now is Kevin Schofield, who's political editor at the Huffington Post UK. Good morning to you, Kevin. Morning, David. Morning. So much to talk about uh, this morning. Just when you think the Conservative Party can't get themselves in any more hot water, we find out that Lee Anderson has the whip suspended. He did an interview. He gave his personal opinion on various things. They've removed the whip. Did they do the right thing? I think politically they didn't have much choice um, by the end. Uh, it wasn't just Labour MPs who were criticising him. Quite a lot of high-profile Conservatives, including ministers, were going on social media, making clear they were very unhappy with what Lee Anderson had said. Um, now, he was obviously given the opportunity to apologise. Uh, the statement put out yesterday by the Chief Whip, Simon Hart, was that he was being um, suspended and having the whip removed for refusing to apologise. So clearly, the inference there is, had he apologised for what he said, then presumably he would have got to keep the whip. So he was given an opportunity. He wouldn't take that opportunity. And then the consequences followed. Now, he put out a statement, Lee Anderson, afterward, basically saying, it's a fair cop. I understand the party had no other option, is how he put it, other than to um, remove the whip after he had had his discussions with the chief whip. So, uh, so yeah, I, I don't think they had any option, really. But... When I'm reading the messages from everyone around the country, they are saying, where is the evidence that Anderson is wrong? What exactly has Khan done to counter Anderson's allegation? Khan supports the hate marches. He endorses a two-tier policing. He says nothing about the escalation of anti-Semitism in London. Labour has jumped on Anderson's comments to deflect them from corrupting the Speaker, which, as we know, happened, or at least the shenanigans in the House of Commons. Also, many people saying the same thing here. This is Chris in Norwich saying... 
at last someone with a backbone to speak up about this problem within the country. Has the Conservative Party completely lost the plot in actually not understanding what the vast majority of people in this country think? Well, one thing he says is that the, the central premise of Lee Anderson's comment was, was wrong. He, he said that Sadiq Khan had done nothing to stop the Marxists. Well, Sadiq Khan doesn't have the power to stop the Marxists. We, 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 thankfully, we don't live in a country where politicians get to decide who can and can't protest. It's up to the police. And now we can have a separate debate as to whether or not the police, one, have enough powers, or two, are using the powers that they have at the moment sufficiently. But, you know, as I say, this, the central thrust of what Lee Anderson was saying was wrong and not only that you know had he been um say a labor politician accusing a jewish mayor of being you know in hock to zionists being controlled by um jewish people is which is pretty much what um lee anderson was saying about the mayor and um islamists then they would quite rightly be a huge outcry and leading the charge i'm sure would be rishi sunak so um so yeah i think if you, if you flip it on its head then you can see why those uh, comments that Lee Anderson made were so offensive. And really, as I say, I don't think the, the, the party had much choice. So, so what do you think is going to happen to the polling on the back of this? I mean, I'm not sure it will really affect the headline polling at the moment. I mean, you could well see some um, voters uh, come election day certainly um, being more inclined to vote reform. I mean, I know that is something that... Um, the Conservatives are very concerned about. And I think that's probably why they gave Lee Anderson every opportunity um, to apologise and therefore not have to remove the whip from him. I mean, interesting, on Friday night when this story really took off, I contacted um, the Conservative Party to see if they wanted to make any comment. And mm -hmm. at that time, a senior source within the party was actually standing by Lee Anderson and sort of trying to put into context what he had said. So clearly the initial... Um, instinct of the party, I think, was to not cut Lee Anderson loose because they know, as you know, the, the comments that, that, that you're receiving this morning show that he does tap into uh, a view that is out there among voters who the Conservatives want to vote for them come the election. So they gave him every opportunity, and I think rather reluctantly in the end, they removed the whip from him. So they realised the political jeopardy of doing so because, you know, as I say, they are very worried about reform. You've only got to look at the, um, the opinion polls to see that reform, you know, their support has ticked up. They did pretty well in those two by-elections a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, there is definitely a gamble here. It's not all win here for the Conservatives. You know, they are, um, as I say, potentially bleeding support on their right flank, and this might not help. Um, if you look at the front, I think it's the front page of the Telegraph, it's certainly in the Telegraph, Nigel Farage has uh, offered an olive branch to him saying, come and join reform, you would be welcome, actually it would be a better home for you. If he was to join reform, would that send shivers down uh, the back of the Conservative Party? I think potentially it could, you know, I mean, I, I remember um, when... Uh, way back before the, the Brexit referendum when some Conservative MPs flipped to UKIP, you know, and that was a bit of a, a straw in the wind and that certainly worried uh, Conservative high command. And yeah, this this would also not be great. I mean, considering that just last month, uh, Lee Anderson was still the, the deputy chairman of the party. You know, <clears> if he was to then defect to, some, to someone else, then, you know, that really would be quite a seismic um, event. Now, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, he has spoken before, Lee Anderson, about how he allegedly has been tapped up by reform. He says he was offered money to to switch to reform. And which Richard Tice now, denies. Which he denies, exactly. And he um, has thus far refused to do so. But now if he's suspended by the party, he's officially sitting as an independent MP now, um, he may well decide to, to, to jump ship. And it would be quite a remarkable moment, not least because... Lee Anderson was once a Labour councillor, so he's been on quite a political journey. Well, well, also, of course, it would give Reform UK its first MP. It would, and, you know, as, um, as a symbolic moment, that would certainly be quite something. And um, not only that, you know, I know that the Conservatives are very worried about Nigel Farage. Now, you mentioned Nigel Farage there. I, mm. I don't think he's going to stand um, for Parliament, but just by being there, by being a figurehead for the Reform Party, for perhaps leading their general election campaign, then that would really, really send shivers down the spine 
of Conservative Party bosses. So, uh, so yeah, very interesting times ahead, I think. And now, Labour is not out of the woods here at all. We saw what I thought were disgraceful scenes in the House of Commons the other day with this amendment put forward by the SNP. Now, the SNP, I think, were playing quite clever politics by, by proposing that motion. We know Lindsay Hoyle has got into a lot of uh, trouble over that. Now, the SNP are proposing that amendment again. What, in your in your opinion, what is the reason for doing that? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head that they they want to do it because they they wanted to expose the divisions of the Labour Party the last time. They obviously um, were unable to do that because of the way things turned out and Lindsay Hoyle accepting that Labour amendment rather controversially. So they were they didn't get the opportunity to expose those divisions which do undoubtedly exist within the Labour Party. So this is them wanting to have basically a second bite of the cherry, because you've got to remember, um, up in Scotland, um, Labour and SNP are pretty much neck and neck, and all the polls seem to suggest that, that Labour could take an awful lot of SNP seats at the general election. So they want to um, hammer home these um, these splits within the, the Labour Party. I think that, that explains why the SNP were so angry mm. last week, not just because their motion hadn't been voted on, but because they had been frustrated and their attempt to try and highlight those splits. So, so if they bring that amendment in, then the right of reply would also naturally go to the government. The SNP then may well expose, as you say, the divisions within the Labour Party. Now, when you look at their wording, the SNP, their amendment calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Labour is calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire with two caveats. Firstly, that Hamas lays down its weapons and the release of those 134 hostages. The Conservatives have a slightly different a message tonally, immediate humanitarian pause and a permanent sustainable ceasefire. Starmer could be in big trouble, I think, in that vote. Well, he could be, and obviously, given the, the mess that Lindsay Hoyle made of it last week and the, um, the criticism that he received, he, now going forward, I think, is going to have to o almost overcompensate to show that he's not biased towards the Labour Party, because don't forget, you know, his own personal position is still not mm. completely safe and yeah you're right i mean how labor then vote in that um debate would be fascinating i mean labor did think that they had um really avoided potential problems last week the way it, the way it turned out but clearly if the smp want to bring this forward and lindsay hoyle has also said that he would like to facilitate such a debate taking place then I'll, that obviously just brings all these troubles up to the fore again for the labor party i think one thing to remember is the three parties aren't actually that far apart on the issue of Gaza. They all want a ceasefire. Mm. It's all it's all on semantics. It's all on wording exactly how that ceasefire looks, how it how it comes about, and what happens next. But um, but again, it's all about politics between the, the parties at Westminster with a general election looming. Can I just ask you very quickly about the US uh, primaries here? This is the Republicans. Uh, Donald Trump is one step closer to becoming the Republican presidential nomination. He has won over Nikki Haley in South Carolina. That's her home territory. Yeah, as I understand it, that's the first time that has ever happened that uh, a potential uh, candidate um, has lost in their home state. I mean, I, although it's not that much of a surprise, all the polling suggested that that was going to happen. We don't have the final figures yet, um, but it's undoubtedly the case that Donald Trump has won that particular primary. But Nikki Haley, um, despite a lot of predictions to the contrary, says that she's going to hang in there. Now, she's pretty much got no chance of becoming the Republican um, nominee. However, she can still do some damage to Donald Trump um, in the remainder of the primary process by basically attacking him and taking donors that might otherwise have gone to Trump to her to her own campaign so uh, so yeah but it's all over bar the shouting donald trump will be the republican nominee and he'll go up against um joe biden again i'm sure in a repeat of the the last presidential <laughs> election four, groundhog four day here we come uh, really interesting actually watching what's going on in the states really good to talk to you thank you very much indeed kevin kevin schofield their political editor at the huffington post uk what are your thoughts was the Conservative Party right to sack Lee Anderson? 
What happened to freedom of speech, freedom of thought? Isn't it good that MPs can say what they actually think rather than towing a party line? The number 0344 499 1000. Send a WhatsApp as well. I'm getting them on the screen now. That's very clever. Uh, you can also text us. Text the word talk in your message to 8722. You can also tweet us at Talk TV. Then leave a space. Then hashtag Breakfast Doctors. I'm turning off the air con because Dr. Rene is absolutely freezing. This is Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent, that's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? <laughs> What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, miss it. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> There are no banners calling for the re release of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no the banners, mass. Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march. Not, when no, can't say them on that. Sorry, no. I'm yeah. sorry, I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you no, can't. It's good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names. The New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn. What, what is that? What on earth? is going on in the House of Commons. I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right, Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. Rishi Sunak actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised yeah, by special right. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> your Collins. mind. <laughs> it's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to Talk Today with me, David Boyle, Dr. Rennie Hunderkamp in the house, 8.25, Sunday, February the 25th. Thank you very much indeed for all your messages. Wow, you are on fire. Lee Anderson, this one, says, is such an obvious set-up scenario. The Tories know they're finished, so they set this up. He will return, he will run for Mayor of London, and he will win. I don't know quite how that works. <laughs> so the Tories then remain in power, even if a small uh, way. How does that work? Because it Susan can't. Hall is their, their candidate. Yeah. And I mean, that, it's it May. We're nearly there. Yeah, we're we can't do that. And also, I assume the ballot's closed already. So yeah. I, uh, I don't know if it has, but I assume. Uh, now, this one is Nigel in Romford. Good morning, Sonny Romford. Uh, instead of suspending Lee Anderson, they should have promoted him to <laughs> Prime Minister. Someone at last with a backbone. I have uh, had a few like that. <laughs> uh, I think it's very clear, isn't it, that what people are saying at home. Yes, I mean, my, the inbox this morning has, it always goes crazy, but today it's gone absolutely mad. Um, you know, I've got here, reluctantly removed the whip from Anderson, your guest said. Cow Town is how I describe it. Michael Turner says white people are cast as racist if they dare to speak their mind on a myriad of issues, but Muslims get a free pass to say and do whatever they want. Freedom of speech is under attack. We are being marginalised. Yeah. 
yeah. I'm going to read this one as well. Uh, where's that gone? Um, just uh, Good morning, Doctor, says Jason in Birmingham. I think you are both amazing. That's very kind. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Uh, just one thing to say. I do think we should mention Enoch Powell here. I believe he was right. What he said is coming true. What do you think? Please read this out. I have. Thank you. Great show. Thank you uh, to you, Jason. Um, and this uh, came in... Uh, David and Renee. I, I don't think I've done this. Um, Thank you for your dose of Sunday sanity. Lee Anderson had to go for daring to share the feelings of millions of voters in this country. However, such views are considered populist by the lily-livered political establishment full of globalist saps, an elite that has nothing but disdain for an electorate that it grudgingly needs to keep it in power. Sunak has now signed the Tories' death warrant. That's Nick Moore in Loughborough. I do think they signed it themselves a little while ago. <laughs> But they keep digging. I know. They dig and then dig again and but then I, they're in the bottom of a hole. I think they were in that hole quite a while ago, though. But the hole's enormous. <laughs> <laughs> the hole's getting bigger. Right, it's time for the Future Politics Panel. The Future Politics Panel. Well, joining us uh, this morning, I'm delighted to say, I think it's Sosa, Hen is that right? Sosa Henkoma, who is a sociology and criminology student and modern slavery trainer, and joining him, Ben Cope, political writer and commentator. Good morning to the two of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start, <laughs> shall we start with Lee Anderson? <laughs> um, it's so interesting. So yesterday I was at a conference, I was coming back on the train thinking, I wonder what the top story is tomorrow. Then the Lee Anderson stuff broke. My phone went absolutely ballistic. We can see it this morning. The Tory party, let me ask you that question I'm asking everyone. Were the Tory party right to sack him? I think they were absolutely right. Why? Well, if you, if you look at what, what, what he said, he said that London is being, is being taken over by his mates. And I think... Whose mates? Khan's, you mean? Khan's mates, yes. sorry. And, no, he um, said, I believe. Well, okay. I believe they are, yeah. And I, th I think if we take a sort of general view of prejudice of, like, would... Um, would that have been said if if Khan was, you know, not a, openly a, a Muslim and not an ethnic minority? I don't, I don't think he would have made those comments. So I think for that reason, he had to go. So, so that's really interesting. In terms of what, what are your thoughts on this? Because actually, what he said, he was asked, "Do you think Islamists have got control of our country?" He replied, "I don't actually believe that Islamists have got control of our country. What I do believe is they have control of Khan. They have control of London. He has given our capital city away to his mates." He made a comment. I believe that he has the right to make that comment as an independent, free-minded thinker. Are you worried that by removing the whip, essentially what they're saying is you stick to party line or you're out? Was it the right decision? I would therefore say it, it, was, it was... For me, it was the right decision because at the end of the day, you shouldn't... Obviously, everyone's allowed to have the right to speak, but at the end of the day, you should have care for some... Obviously, another, the other person you're speaking about. So... Mm. You're allowed to make make whatever comments you want to make, but regarding obviously someone, obviously someone religion, something that personal to someone, you shouldn't be able to. So, so that's an interesting point. You felt it was too personal. Yeah, and and in in terms of that, he he, I think he mentioned something that we're seeing. Where, do you live in London? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, well, of course. <laughs> Everybody lives not, every, not everyone lives in London, you know. Uh, there are many people around this country watching now who don't live in London. But what, what do you make of what we're seeing? The marches, the pro-Palestine marches, we're seeing Jewish people afraid to go out onto the streets. Is that acceptable in this country? It's acceptable to have, obviously, free what? right to speech, so 100%. What, but, what? Well, no, only certain free rights to speech, then, by what you're saying. Yes. So you yeah. said that exactly where I'm going with it. <laughs> so, so you're, yeah, she's good. Isn't she? um, so you're saying that he, uh, you, yeah, you're saying that the marchers have freedom to speech and to march, but Lee Anderson doesn't have. No, right. I'm saying he. What has, are you saying? He has rights to speak, but obviously, at the end of the day, you have to care for someone. Obviously, at the end of the day, how someone else is going to take it, take that, mm. because for me, if you're going to speak on something, is like. You can't just go around just saying anything and everything. Mm -hmm. like, you have to be obviously cautious of what you're saying and how other people may take it. And that's what, especially as someone so, like, as a, as a politician. So we've got Jewish people saying they're afraid to come into the centre of London because they don't want to bump into people shouting from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free. Are they okay to say that, not thinking about the Jews? <laughs> And, and that, that, well, what do you think about that? Let, let, me, let me come to you, Ben. 
our overwhelming sense from people here is thank goodness someone has said what everyone is thinking mm. which is actually and we spoke about it yesterday <laughs> i've kind of forgotten what day it is we spoke about it yesterday there is a there is a problem with radical ideology in this country it's not the majority of people but there is a problem with this radical muslim ideology which is being pushed in this country isn't it right that politicians say we've got a problem we need to deal with it because that's what people are saying at home well, I'd probably take issue with the fact that whether it's being pushed or not, but you know, whether when there's extreme ideology of, of all forms, yes, it probably should be countered. But with the specific Lee Anderson example, I'd, I'd go back to that prejudicial point that I think for that reason he had to go. Right. So, but but he, but he opened the conversation. He did. I think people already people been, when I was no, last on this show in oh, October, <laughs> we were talking about this, and I think we've been talking about it for every month since. So I think you know we we've been talking about this for months. So um, when you look at Sadiq Khan. His connections to radical extremists are actually very easy to find. There are lots of them. He was the chairman of the Muslim Council of Britain, who stood up and declared that the Ahmadis were not Muslim enough, so the murder of an Ahmadi in, in Glasgow was not a Muslim murder. In his capacity as the um, Muslim Council of Britain chair, um, he argued in Parliament that the Muslim Brotherman cleric, Yusuf al-Qaradi, was not the extremist that he was painted to be. This was the cleric who praised Jihadi John for beheading people. He actually wrote a forward to Cage's report, who has since declared that ISIS executioner Jihadi John to be a beautiful man. There are lots and lots of connections to Muslim extremists that Sadiq Khan has done and are there to Well, find. well he, his argument would be, I'm a lawyer, I've represented those people. That is his argument. That is his, you see, she's done her homework on this. People see, rightly or wrongly, they see the affiliation. They feel they, they have a mayor that doesn't speak for the majority of London, and that will be reflected in the ballot box, I think. But, uh, well, I, th I think he's probably quite likely to win, but at the same time, some people will be will be put off by, by this. But although I, I think I'd, I'd probably reference the, the point that Kevin Schofield just made earlier on this, this programme, that you know, as, as for the specific actions that Sadiq Khan can make here. I think he, he, he does have limited powers here. The, the, the Met are ultimately responsible for, you know, policing in London, for the issues we saw on London he Bridge is the head of He the is Met. the head of the Met. Well, he, they're answerable to him. It's a really unusual case, but that is their point. And equally to the Home Secretary, isn't that right? My understanding is actually it's the Mayor that controls the budget of the Mayor. But, um, just, but just in terms of that, I, do, do you sense that there is a disconnect between the politicians and the electorate? I mean, as, as generally, perhaps on on, on this issue, I, th I think this is a this is a very divisive issue where people are people take different views, um, and you know, Sadiq Khan is obviously more on one side, and so people on the other will feel like he doesn't represent them. Mm. You know, perhaps he perhaps there are instances where he could have taken a more balanced view, but I'm, I'm not sure it's a. As kind of as as a significant issue, I'm just really worried. It's mob rule. It, it's it's all the parties are panicking now. Meanwhile, um, Lee Anderson obviously it, it no longer has the whip. There is also Nigel Farage pushing Lee Anderson to join Reform UK. Reform UK did well in the last two by elections at 13% in Wellingborough, 10% in Kingswood, and is now the third party when you look at the polls. It if Lee Anderson joined Reform UK. What do you think might happen? Does that does that change anything? So I I, I think it, it 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 would probably play well to the voters that Reform is, is, is trying to attract. You know, he's a he's a he's a charismatic what, politician. What voters are they trying to attract? Well, I, I mean, all, all the the tweets and calls that you've been reading out this morning about people who felt who feel that for whatever reason they they don't have control of the country. They so they the vast majority of the country. So well, I, I wouldn't be as optimistic about your your electoral chances as that. But <laughs> right. So so. But I, the, what the point I'm trying to make is, I don't think I don't think it's that cut and dried as to the type of person who votes for reform because, or any other party or any party. Because when when you go to vote, so so, what what is utmost in your mind when you cast that ballot? Which uh, don't tell me the party bill. What what is the biggest issue for you when you go to vote? People that are gonna obviously stand by my community, right? And yeah. is is that a local level or is that a national level? Usually, it'd be local level. Would mm -hmm. it even in a general election? In a general election, obviously, it would be national. But more to more or less, I would say I would always focus on 
who's going to actually help locally mm. rather than obviously sure. looking. But it, let's go to the general election. In terms of priority, is it crime? Is it policing? Is it immigration? What would... Or I would say, is it something I would else? say all three of them. Crime, and, immigration yeah. and policing. Especially when it comes to the com- community I'm from. And, and, and tell us about that community. Um, I might say the community outcome, there's a lot of, I say, police are targeted a lot because obviously, like we like we've seen already over the BBC, um, was it the BBC Three? No, the ITV, the Catch the Copper, and how everyone felt about that. And then also, when it comes to crime, young people are not being looked at as, as obviously, are not being looked at as children. They've be instead they've been adultified and treated like criminals. So obviously, one hundred percent, I'm going to look at someone that's going that's able to target these things and target these issues. So, so ta- is there is there trust in the police where you're from? Not as much, I'll say. Not as much. And why is that? I'll say that's due to probably a lot of situations where police on police were not a lot of services were not trauma informed. So then people are not dealing with things in a trauma informed way. So they're not actually handling kids. I like kids instead they're being like I said, being criminalized. Is there an issue there with the with, and we have talked about policing before, a breakdown in respect, authority. Have the police done that to themselves or is that just because there aren't enough on the street? What's going on? Well, I, th- I think it's, probably, it's a really complicated issue going back back decades, you know, with, with the Mets, you know, lose, losing trust in, in, in certain communities. I think, um, you know, th- th- these last few months probably, ha- you know, haven't haven't helped. But I think it's a it's a much longer, longer history. J- just going back to and I'm just really intrigued by this because in terms of members of parliament, there's an article this morning in the Telegraph. Private security is being deployed by uh, to protect members of parliament after warnings that the Israel Hamas conflict is a, is a generational radicalizing moment. So security personnel working for private firms are guarding constituency surgeries and providing close protections for a growing number of politicians who are at risk or assessed to be at risk. There's a line here. People are underestimating the threat to politicians from extremists. This is something called Operation Bridger. I know about this because I was part of this when I was a member of the European Parliament. Would you become an MP? No. Why? (laughs) For me, um, I would say personally, I'm more I like to be more in the field. Like literally I like to be engaging directly with obviously the community rather than not be you know but saying? isn't that what an mp should be doing a hundred percent but like i said last i've never really i've never seen my mp no, I've no never but, seen my but MP. maybe you could set an example you can say right i'm going to represent my community at a national level that is right rene's right that's how you build democracy from the grassroots you know that community yeah. better than anyone so wouldn't that be a good idea you stand for parliament <laughs> I'll probably say that's something in the future but not me personally right now is not my main thing I would like to just focus mainly on the on my community and be rebuilding that community in the best way I, I, I could but I, I believe being a MP is not really gonna get me there do you think you can see anyone in your community who would make a good 100 percent 100 percent there are a couple of people which I would say 100 percent would be a great MP. And do, you, and do you think that they have the volition, the drive? Would they do it? Hundred percent with the right type of support. Hundred percent. But I don't feel like there's enough support. There's there's not enough support to get a where young does, person where does like that, me. Where does that support need to come from? It needs to come from obviously the government. The government. In what way? In the way of funding and also in the way of actually. Yeah, I'll say hundred percent funding. There's not enough funding. There's not enough funding for like so, like actual organisations supporting young people. Like okay. there's there's no, especially even when it comes to social work social social workers and and probation officers, they they're not getting the right supports to, support to actually look after look after themselves to look after young people. And it's interesting, and, and 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 it is an interesting point. When you stand for parliament, it's incredibly time consuming. You have mm-hmm. to go. Uh, when I have stood for parliament, you can't really work if you're mounting an effective yeah. campaign, and you, so therefore you have to have someone who unfortunately has the reserves to be able to do that. Would you stand? It would. That's definitely a question for the future. But I, I think it's a. It's a. It's a you re- should be a politician because you don't answer my question. <laughs> um, would you stand? I, I'm. I'm not thinking about it right no. now. I'm 24. But yeah. uh, um, but, I, but I think that the, the issue about 
it, it, becoming a politician being a particularly time-consuming thing to do that you can't necessarily do alongside full-time work is, is a really important point and, and one that I think in, in Rory Stewart's recent book that he, 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 he made where you, you have to, as, to become a politician, you have to spend so much time you know, leafleting, door-knocking mm, round. You do. Round, and and, and whether, whether that's really a... a is, is that the best use of, of, of future politicians' time who we hope will be legislating on, on national issues? I think it's a good question. But that, now, that's the number that... The, the, that is really interesting. Back in the day, so, so when, you, when you do co go in canvas, the whole point of knocking on doors is not only to find out the allegiance, but it's actually to understand the issues in that community. Mm. But, but, but so, so there is a, a division of thought here about how effective it is. If you get a leaflet through your door from your local doesn't matter conservative labor party whichever do you read them some of them i do but do you but some of them i feel like straight it's just from what i see in the front the front the front of the leaflet yeah so if it attracts me 100 percent, i'm going to read it but if that's it really interesting so is that words or is it the look of the person or the it's, color of the I'll, leaflet i would say not the color of the leaflet i'll say words and also the look the, the the look of the person like literally if the person looks like someone that is able to stand for my community then 100 percent. but then if it's someone that I, I obviously i've i've seen in the papers that's not really that have not stood for the community it's something i'm going to think oh it's just just another you know what i'm saying just throw away well that's completely completely changed my view then because i didn't <laughs> think people read them what about yourself <laughs> I, I definitely do, although I don't think I'm necessarily politically representative. Um, mm. I, you know, Why you're too engaged? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you read every single line and word and nuance. Yeah, I mean, I, but but you know, this is something I, I'm very interested in, so I I, I definitely would. Um, but I, but I, I think um, in in terms of that that literature that that, that comes through the letterbox, I, I'm quite often frustrated at how actually how focused it is on on sort of hyper local issues. You know, the, but I mean, Sosa mm. wants that. Yeah. So I, I think I'd, I'd, I'd probably re respectfully disagree in, in terms of I, I don't like the, the MP model where they've become sort of super councillors, if you like, where mm. they're, they're the, the, the sort of se senior, senior national legislators which are you know, focused on, on blocking a sort of planning permission on a few, a few houses. I think I, I'd, I'd prefer if they sort of look, looked up and thought about you know, what are the, the key issues facing But, but that is the idiosyncrasy of our parliamentary system. So actually the backbone of your work as a constituency member of parliament is dealing with bins and collections and roofing and bad housing and damp and all that stuff and it's not until you become a senior politician that you can legislate and i don't like that system yeah, well, okay <laughs> fine fair enough fair enough stay exactly where you are let's take a quick break uh, so sir and ben thank you very much indeed uh, for the moment keep all of your calls coming in please was the tory party right to sack lee anderson the number 03444991000 send us a whatsapp Yes, very clever indeed. Text the word TALK and your message to 8722. Also, you can tweet us at TALK TV, leave a space, hashtag Breakfast Doctors. Is it warmer for you now? It is warmer, but it got quite chilly. Do you uh, not agree? Uh, <laughs> it did, actually. This is TALK TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with TALK TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which said yeah. nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I, I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? 
What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, <missy. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> there are no banners calling for and the release of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no Hamas. banners, Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march where we can't say Hamas. Hamas. Sorry, no, I'm yeah. sorry. I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you can't. Like, good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth is going on in the House of Commons? I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right. Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. If Richard Soon actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised by yeah, special counsel. Right. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh. what? <laughs> your your mind. mind. <laughs> it's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. To talk today with me, David Bull, the wife's in, Dr. Rennie Hunderkamp. Good morning, David and Rene, says Ian. Good morning, Good Ian. Morning. What typical, hypocritical, contra contradictory, bleating, verbal, diarrhea statements are coming out of the mouths of lily livered, pathetic politicians? That's you, by the way. No, it isn't, though. <laughs> if there is no risk or rise, <laughs> if there is no risk or rise in Islamist extremism, Ree Anderson's truthful statement, why are they all now needing bodyguards and new laws to protect them? from the rise in Islamist extremism. Uh, Ian, thank you very much indeed. Um, we were talking about Lee Anderson as well. Uh, and I was talking about Nigel Farage extending the olive branch to Lee Anderson. Jane says, good morning to you, Jane. Uh, Nigel and Lee, what a wonderful combination they would be. They are exactly what we need in this country. Many more coming in. Lee Anderson should not be sacked. He spoke for the majority of people in this country. Wonderful, outstanding show, Doctor, says Jason in Birmingham. You'll like this. The brilliant Lee Anderson should be put on the spare plinth in Trafalgar Square. <laughs> <laughs> he is a national hero and he speaks for most of the nation. So I've just got one I'm going to read, which is Michael Turner, who says, these two young men, I thought I'd read this for you, don't deserve to live in a democracy with freedom of speech at its heart if they think that they can police people's thoughts and only allow people to say what's acceptable, really. Response? Freedom from speech doesn't mean freedom from consequences. I do agree okay, with that. Okay, what's that mean? So, okay. he, so no, no one's saying that Lee Anderson should go to prison for what he said. It's, it's that he holds a political office and the Conservatives are a right to remove, you know, affiliation if they, if I, they don't okay, disagree so that's, with it. Uh, and you agree with that? I agree with that. At yeah. the end of the day, 100%, if you're allowed to speak, but that doesn't mean that you, there's no consequences with everything you say, 100%. How long before Lee Anderson gets the whip back? I think it would be a mistake if they gave it back. But they will, weren't they? Why? Well, it's a good question, unless he leaves, of course. I don't. I honestly think it's a knee-jerk reaction. I think they they caved into pressure from uh, various MPs, different political sides. I don't think there is any clear direction coming out from the Conservative Party, and I would I would add other parties to that. Uh, let's go on and talk about the BBC. And I do just want to mention this: it, the BBC's Director General told staff the corporation should be proud to be progressive, according to the Telegraph this morning. Uh, in a leaked recording, Tim Davies said the BBC walked a an I quote a joyous tightrope of the culture wars and being progressive was something staff should be proud of. This was in an online question and answer session with employees. Uh, many people are saying, however, this is the BBC uh, adopting a political position. He said, we do a reasonably good job of walking along the joyous tightrope of culture wars where being progressive, diverse, doing the things that we should be proud of is not woke. But meanwhile, we've got to make sure that we are clearly representing views from across the board. Let me ask you, um, as a young person, they are desperate to reach out to people like you. This was the BBC's big problem. Now, as you know, I think you mentioned BBC Three earlier. BBC Three was launched as a youth service on television. Then they ran out of cash. They put it online, realised that was a terrible mistake, went back to a linear channel, put it back on a channel. Does it talk to you, BBC Three? 
Um, hundred percent BBC Three talks. Obviously, even my my best friend recently has just been put on a show. His show has just been on put on BBC Three, and obviously, a lot of young people watch BBC Three. So, hundred percent. So, so what what does that do to the way you feel about the BBC? I would say for me, especially having. Obviously, I'm a bit, I'll say, biased because obviously my friends of on course, the show. Of and I'm sure it's the best show. <laughs> like, thank you. Like, to me, yeah, that's the best right now. So I would, yeah, I like BBC Three right now. <laughs> and, but, but you feel, and would you be happy, you're happy to pay the licence fee? 100%. Uh, obviously, I have to, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think you must be the only young person in London happy to pay the BBC licence fee. No, well, this, this is the really important po- point. For you, what would you agree? BBC Three is, while well, you may be not as important to you. Yeah. So, I, do, I mean, I, I don't pay the licence fee because I think I can get, you know, some, some mm. entertainment and my news from, from other channels. But I do, I, I do think the BBC plays, a, you know, an important mm. role in... in you know, British discourse. So you don't pay for it. So therefore, should we then move? And I agree with you. I think when it when it performs brilliantly, it is excellent. However, there are massive holes in it. I think and political bias. Um, I don't like their stance on on, on Gaza, for example. But that is the, their editorial independence. In terms of the 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 funding mechanism going forward, should it remain a license fee or should it be subscription only? I, I, I think it should move towards a subscription model. I think w- when there are, there's an increasing options of, 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 of different ways that people get their news and entertainment, it, it, it seems odd that there's a there's sort of a monopoly to access Freeview that you have to you have to go through the BBC now. It seems quite antiquated. And what about you, Sosa? Pay, pay, pay for it a license fee like Netflix, like any of those other ones. I would say definitely they should definitely they should definitely at least try that. They should definitely at least try that because obviously for me, if I had the choice of subscribing rather than paying yes then i would subscribe but paying paying for me is that obviously i felt like is the right thing to do because at the end of the day t- obviously you always get the letters of oh uh, you need to pay for your tv <laughs> license you need to pay for your tv license it's a criminal offense not to pay for your tv so license just so for me really and truly at the end of the day i pay tv license because i feel like it's part of the household build but if i had a choice of subscribing i'm subscribing oh, yeah, so, oh that's interesting <laughs> yeah, you don't have a television i don't no, so but you... I do watch obviously on computer. You know that, so I buy a license because. But not live. Yeah. Oh, you do buy a license because, because you, because you watch cannot live. watch any live TV, and I watch talk TV. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Obviously, but obviously there are other ways to do that as well. And <laughs> um, let me just ask you about this as young people. Not live if you don't want to no. see the TV. Live. <laughs> Indeed, I have to I, because oh, I won't go into that. But, I, but because of my bizarre setup, I have to have two TV licenses. I'll leave that there. Um, <laughs> this is a great story, and I wondered if either of you got into this mess. Um, this is about a, a party uh, that was happening and there was an invitation sent out, whoops, went out virally on Facebook. More than 300 teenagers appeared at someone's house because they had a party. And this invitation went viral uh, in West Sussex. The house party took place in Worthing in West Sussex. Unfortunately, got slightly out of control. 300 kids arrived, tried to attend the party, couldn't get in the house. They were on the roads. They were in uh, in neighbouring lawns. The police were called. Amazing Amazingly, dozens of police uh, cars and officers arrived on the scene. They issued a dispersal order. How can't they do that for well, certain marches, <laughs> like on Tower Bridge, but they can do it in a party in West Sussex? Uh, anyway, it took several hours. Um, <laughs> it took several hours. I'd love to see the parents' face. Have you ever been in a position like that where a party's got out of control? Yeah, ground up, 100%. 100%. Come on, then. Dish. And for me... <laughs> <laughs> no, for me, at the end of the day, I actually... You, in that situation, you do expect police to obviously police to be called, and if you expect some police to be called, you expect to act in a certain type of manner. And obviously, having um, I'll say having people's cars being kicked and all these type of things mm. at the end of the day, no, it's obviously, not fair. no, it's not, it's not fair at all. Would you ever put a party invitation on social media? Oh no, that's that's uh, yeah, that's, that's that's a big risk. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big no, no, isn't it? And what about you, Ben? Have you had an out of control party? Not there's nothing like that, and, and I think yeah, best be invitations of social media if you want to keep any kind of I control. Think, I, I think that's <laughs> that's brilliant. Thank you very much to both of you, to Sosa Hencoma and Ben Cope, and that was today's Future Politics panel. The Future Politics panel. Time for some quick calls. Uh, Terry is in Sheffield. Good morning to you. Good morning, David. Morning, Good morning, morning. What's on your mind? Well, you asked the question, were the Tories right to yes, remove Tommy Anderson? In, from their perspective, they may well have been right, but I agree with the view that you've expressed that 
the, the view Lee Anderson expressed probably reflects uh, a large part of country, myself included, a, a Labour voter for 40 years. So we'll be, I'll be voting reform at the next election. Really interesting that. Just, But also, it, what does it do, do you think, in terms of the polling for the Conservative Party? Well, it blasts, I'm not sure the polls will always be right. Because no. It'll be closer at the election, but I think the Tories are just hold below the waterline. They're sinking uh, quicker and quicker, and they've just run out of ideas. Yeah. From, mm. from my perspective, nobody there's nobody out there for me to vote for. Uh, you... If you say anything at all about uh, uh, illegal migration... You immediately classified as a racist, and then well, the entire so that's really interesting. And what what I was going to ask you was, do you think they've run out of ideas, or do you think they've run out of backbone? I don't think they've ever had any backbone. And, and and in terms of Labour, you said you were a lifelong Labour voter. There's a lot of accusations about Labour not being true to Labour roots, that it is a now a metropolitan liberal elite where they're too busy drinking cappuccinos in Islington and they've lost touch with their working class roots. Would you agree with that? I totally agree with it, yeah. Interesting. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed for your call, Terry. Charlie is in Leicestershire. Good morning to you. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Uh, morning. Thanks for having me on. No, great uh, pleasure, great pleasure. Were they right to sack him? No, they were totally wrong to sack him. Um, the trouble is, Labour, what you were just saying about Labour there, it was uh, started as a working, by workers for the working class. The Conservatives have been taken over. The Labour Party has been taken over. I think there's only going to be one party to vote for, and everybody's saying, don't vote for them because you'll let... Uh, the Labour Party in, but reform. If everybody votes for reform, it will be the biggest wake-up call this country needs. Mm -hmm. It was totally right to say what he says. When you've got MPs that have to be protected, okay. you've got a teacher who's still in hiding, what have the police done about that? You know, because he just showed a, a, a picture of... The country has been taken over by extremists and mm. we're sleepwalking into disaster and I, I, I hate to say it people will call me a racist a bigot and everything but it's true and we've got to stand up and say enough is enough good to talk to you charlie thank you very much indeed thank 60 you. seconds from dave in oxford good morning morning good morning guys love the show thank Always you so much Sunday morning uh, you. I, I called last week and you both disagreed with me which is perfectly fine oh, um, sorry about but that I, that's, that's understandable <laughs> um, i wasn't i wasn't happy that uh, that uh, ministers or, or mps now get or getting security because of Why? the threats from from um powers that be uh, underneath all this that's going on and i think proved my point last week when lindsay hoyle caved into intimidation what's happened is over the last 10 15 years this intimidation has got worse and worse and worse and worse yeah. and um we in the general public have had to put up with 77 with the bombing in manchester with uh borough market with london bridge etc yeah. etc et et go on and on and on, on we've had no protection but now it's coming home to roost with their policies they want protection and i'm saying where was our protection your job is to make sure that the people of the country are safe that's your first job when you're in, indeed dave you really strong to... sorry i have to cut you off dave in oxford very Thanks, strong dave. point in Indeed. After the break, we're going to be throwing open the doors to our Sunday surgery. If you've got a complaint, get in touch. Dr. Rennie on the hotspot. This is Talk TV. This is Talk TV. This, my friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job.
Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? <laughs> What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, there was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> There are no banners calling for the release not of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no the banners, mass. Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march not, when no, we condemn the mass. Not sorry, no, I, I'm sorry, I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Can't. Oh, good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth? is going on in the House of Commons. I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right, Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. If Richard Soon actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised by a special right. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> your your mind. <laughs> it's not our minds, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. 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 Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Ready for my new primetime show on Talk TV and Radio, 7 o'clock Saturday night, James Whale Unleash. I don't need you coming in here following me around with a car. I'm so sorry about this. Saturdays at 7 on Talk TV. Hello, very good morning to you. It's just after 9 o'clock now on Sunday, February the 25th. Thank you very much indeed for your company. Great news this morning because it is the Spitfire Challenge charity run. Wow. In so yeah, wow. In wow. some... Yes, wow. In some Rio <laughs> Good luck to everyone taking part in that charity run today. Also today, it's Let's All Eat Right Day. Yum. No, not yum. Eat right. No, yum. Sunday. Sunday fun day, Dr. Rene. Sunday fun day, no calories in anything. You're allowed to have chocolate pudding on a Sunday. It's the law. Um, also, happy birthday to Dominic Raab, who turns 50. I'm quite surprised at that, actually. <laughs> happy birthday. Ed Balls uh, turns 57 today. Right. <laughs> happy, birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Right, it's test time. Today's fascinating facts. Dr. Rene, Dr. Rene, fascinating facts. What were they? Well, at least we didn't go back to somewhere like BC yesterday. Today, like we did yesterday. Nearly. Always whinging, yeah, always complaining. So, 1723, Christopher Wren. Yeah. Was born. <laughs> died. Died. <laughs> died. <laughs> Similar, slightly different. Yeah. Um, and he designed, obviously, St Paul's Cathedral, yes. Greenwich. Um, yeah, the Royal, Royal Naval, Naval College, College, which is a stunning building, actually. So many. He obviously buildings. liked domes. <laughs> Just saying. He obviously did them well. He did. Them, and it's did tricky them well. architecturally. That's Do quite you know tricky. the painted hall in the Greenwich in Greenwich is absolutely mm. beautiful. It's stunning. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Um, 1955. Yeah. The Ark Royal. Yes. Was, was commissioned. It was completed. Yes. Um, the, the the amazing thing, and it depends which source you read, but um, it carried the name. It was either the fourth or the fifth ship to carry that name. The original one was when. No idea. 
in the Spanish Armada <laughs> uh, in, in, in <laughs> 1587. Let's hear that again. In, in 1587, hear <laughs> yeah, that again. Uh, they defeated the Spanish Armada in 1588. The last one. 1972, the miners had a seven-week strike and they settled on mm. this day then. And up to then, we were looking at blackouts and all sorts. Yes, very good. Well done, Dr Rennie. Those were today's fascinating facts. So this morning, uh, once again, we're going to do things slightly differently. If you've got a medical problem that you want to discuss with, with us uh, this morning, uh, do get in touch, please. Uh, you can do it in all the usual ways. Call the number. You can also text us. Uh, you can also uh, WhatsApp us now as well. So get in touch with all of that. As you can see, the phone number 0344 499 1000. Text the word TALK and your message to 8722. You can also tweet us at TALK TV. Leave a space, then hashtag. Uh, breakfast doctors. Whilst uh, you do that, let's move on and talk about uh, a number of um, stories that have been in the paper and I've been keeping them actually just to have a quick chat with you. This is quite interesting about, I don't know if you saw this and whether I sent it to you, there's a health warning over what they're adding to breakfast cereals. Mm. And I think this is quite interesting. A vitamin added to cereals, bread and pasta might be linked to heart disease, according to a study. When you look at breakfast cereals, they all contain niacin, which has mm. been They also added, all contain sugar. And a lot of sugar, yes, but leaving that aside for the moment. There's a chemical in there called 4PY, which is created when the body breaks down the excess niacin. And, and I stress that word, excess. And that chemical seems to be associated with heart attack, strokes and cardiac conditions. What is interesting about this is we have an RDA, a recommended daily amount, that we should be taking. For men, it's 16.5 milligrams. For women, it's 13.2. But in this, there is absolutely buckets of it and I don't think anyone's really looked at this. No, I think what this really is interesting, it, why this is interesting, is we talked last week about the fluoridation of water. We did. And I had a problem with that. Because you do, forced. I have less of a problem. But this is the same thing. Yes. This is people not being consented to be given additives in their diet. It's exactly the same. And it looks like it might even be doing harm. Now, it could just be that those people have not such a good diet, so they're eating far too much mm. of one thing. It could be that their diet is particularly poor anyway therefore they're getting more heart disease so there's probably some confounders but i think it comes back to consent it always comes back to yeah, consent but there is no so why are they adding it because there's no legal requirement to add it no none at all and apparently they're increasing the dose yeah but how much is being added shortly and, and so if you have too much niacin you can then ex basically remove it in your urine but they don't know what the safe level of niacin is. No. There is no data. And they don't know which human being can do that more efficiently no. to another human being. And they are not consenting people to do this. I have a major problem with these attitudes. I do too. Here's a story about, I should have asked these two, the Gen Zs. Apparently, um, and, and, the, and I know this from my own life, whole milk had been really easy to buy until recently because no one bought whole milk. Because do you remember there was that huge campaign saying don't drink whole milk and we need semi-skimmed yeah. and skimmed. And so I changed my, I mean I'm slightly different because I have lactose-free milk, but certainly when I was growing up we had gold top, which was like fat. Which I still have. Yes, you do. And um, My grandparents were great believers and we would have the cereal and pour on the milk and there'd be gold top, which is cream. Yummy. And, uh, yes, and yummy and yummy and yummy. Now apparently... Sales of whole milk are back, Good. Uh, up 2%. And this is because of the Gen Z um, are going with food provenance. So they are um, looking, and this is TikTok. I have to give credit to TikTok. They're saying milk from grass-fed cows, rich in omega-3 acids, yeah. fatty acids, and so on. So it seems the young people are turning away from semi-skimmed and skim version. I mean, skim milk is like skimmed water. Is nothing. It's like water. I mean, look, what we also need to know in all of this is that, firstly, it's good for you. Milk is good for you, especially as a child growing up. Milk is really bones. good for you. Um, it takes 45 litres of water to produce one litre of a milk alternative like oat milk. Water around the world is as precious as oil. Mm. You know, we have to think about what we're doing to the world, not just, oh, I want to be trendy, not drink milk, I'm a bit lactose, whatever it is. 
I'm sorry, but you know we have lots of people. So, Hang for on example, a what did you just say? Yeah, you know what I said. I did. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we have lots of people, for example, who say that they they have glucose intolerance. You know, 11% yes. of the country say they have glucose intolerance. In actuality, when tested, it's one to two percent. Yeah. You know, so there's lots of trending going on here there is. at the expense of other people in poorer parts of the world. Uh, just very quickly, if I can, eating bananas is more effective at reducing blood pressure than cutting down salt. This really? is according. Well, according to this st study, apparently eating an extra gram of potassium, which is the equivalent of two medium-sized bananas, a cup of spinach or a large sweet potato per day, could be a simple way for someone to tackle high blood pressure. How about this? Cut down on salt and have two bananas. No, don't cut down on salt. Salt has been demonised. I, well, I agree with that. There's plenty of evidence to show now that this whole demonisation of salt and blood pressure has been yet another big ag thing. So, so again, we've, we've had these health fads, haven't we? Pushed down our throat like go to semi skim mm -hmm. mill or skim mill or don't have salt on and and salt really took the rap didn't really it really took the rap and if you actually go to the studies and look at them most of them have massive conflicts of interest where the funding's coming from where the research researchers are getting their funding from yeah. And that's a brilliant point, which is that actually a lot of these studies are underwritten and there is money from various vested interests. Yeah. I've got a really good story for you. One, one you'll really like. Will I? Yeah. Uh, scientists are very clever, right, aren't they? Should be. Yeah, they're very clever. Although um, in COVID, I started to <laughs> Well, that's that. also true. Uh, scientists have grown the world's first artificial testicles. <laughs> so, uh, scientists have announced they've grown artificial testicles in a dish. That's nice. What for? Well, I'll get there. They are not yet functioning, but they are sperm-producing organs. They do share many of the same structures and genetic characteristics as national uh, na as naturally occurring ones. Now, apparently, she believes these artificial testicles could be used to study the effects of different toxins on testicular function. This is important because we are seeing that actually sperm counts are reducing in men. Uh, lots of people think that's to do with the estrogenisation of water, for example. Possibly. and And I think that may well be true. Um, <laughs> it's just the idea, you know, when you go home and say, what, are you do what do you do at work? I grow testicles. In a test tube. In a test tube, yeah. So they put them in a lab, actually it's in a lab dish for 14 days. But there is, a, there is a serious side to this because they think these artificial testicles could help survivors of childhood cancers. So, for example, if you've had chemotherapy, mm. whether this could could be uh, useful. But it's interesting, isn't what, it? What, you that? mean to transplant them eventually? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I mean, we do have other solutions that work really well. Sperm freezes very well. Mm -hmm. We always offer that to people that are under, going to undergo chemotherapy. You know, do we need to go down this black hole of artificial testicles? And it will be uteruses next. Next, you know, where mm. men won't be needed anymore, women no. won't be needed anymore. You know, it's a slippery slope. Well, also, they say we cannot say for sure if our organoids, um, and that's a great word, allow full sperm production in the dish. We saw signs the germ cells in the organoids we are generating, well, that we have generated, are entering meiosis. Now, that's the process by which sperm halve their DNA in preparation for fertilizing an egg. <laughs> I just like the idea at a dinner party, people say, What do you do? I grow sperm in a dish. Um, Test Here's one dish. I grew earlier. Yeah, yeah, well, quite, quite, quite. <laughs> uh, now, if you need some help, some medical help, please get in touch. Dr. Rene in the hot seat uh, today. We dealt with some really important uh, conditions last week, we didn't did. we? And so there's nothing that we haven't heard before. Please do get in touch uh, with any of your problems. Meanwhile, let's talk to David in Cumbria. Good morning to you. Hello there. Hi, um, hi. Nice to speak to you and uh, roll on. Reform UK. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I can't comment because we're in Perth. No, but... I know, I know, I know. Right, I've got, I've got slightly high blood pressure. I've okay. been on tablets for a long time. Yeah. I'm on Ramapril. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cloppy dog roll. <laughs> Cloppy dog roll. <laughs> yeah. I quite like Cloppy dog roll. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm a lot of pain. Yeah. yeah. Right. Will it be all right for me to drink beetroot juice? Yes. So the answer is yes. So there is good right. evidence that shows that men, if they drink 100 milligrams of 100 milliliters of beetroot juice a day, can reduce their blood pressure naturally. So what you yeah. need to do is just keep an eye on your blood pressure because if it really works, you'll be looking to actually take one of those blood pressure medications off. Um, the two, the clopidogrel is actually a blood thinner. 
Um, the yeah, other yeah. two that you mentioned are your blood pressure tablets. So if you do manage to get it down naturally with beetroot juice, you might want to speak to your doctor about taking one of those tablets off, which is always a good thing. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm back for another blood pressure test in five weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start on the, on the beetroot juice now. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't and forget... Hopefully, yeah. Don't forget the beetroot juice can actually turn both your poo and your wee red, mm. so don't panic. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that, and that, that's a great point, actually. I remember my... I think it was my brother <laughs> ate so many beetroot that he ha he was weeing red and yeah. my mother thought that there was something Panic. terribly wrong. So, yeah, that's yeah, a really good yeah. point. Um, also, what else are you doing to reduce your blood pressure? What about well, lifestyle uh, changes? Well, I ate, I ate a good veggie diet with, with an odd bit of chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, banana and orange every day. Mm -hmm. How's your weight doing? Yes. Well, I'm slightly over about 14 stone. Five right. eleven, and what? And walking, physical exercise, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I've got, I've got a, I've got exercise bike. I do wow. six kilometres, six kilometres in the morning, and six in the afternoon. What every day? Yeah. Good for you. That's really impressive. So, hang on a minute. What are you snacking as well? No, definitely not. Very good. good are, for you, you. are you seeing a reduction in your weight then? Well, I've only, I've only started this after Christmas. The, the push bike right. thing. Right. The, uh, because last time I was there, it, see, I didn't want to say this on t on TV, but mm. I, I, I'm a triple A, I'm a triple A patient. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess I that see. something was going on because yeah. of the clipping yeah. well. Yeah. Fine. Well, that's that's what it's for, mm. and so I, I, I'm just top and then taking a bit of weight off might help. Yes, yeah. definitely. Hundred percent. And uh, and all the exercise and the, you know I, I don't eat any fried stuff. Good. Yeah, well done. Sounds like, you, sounds like you're doing all of the right things, and the fact that you're yeah. actually thinking about it means that you're on the right track. You know, mm. you're the one who can most look after your health, and it sounds like you're trying to do that. Yeah, well done. Yeah, well, look, doctor said try and get a bit of weight off and uh, eat a proper diet, you know, I say I'm trying. Well, you're doing a great job. That is one heck of a challenge. Six kilometres, I think, every, uh, twice a twice day. Twice a day. Well done yeah. you, David. Well yeah, done you. Uh, can't... Sorry, bye. Uh, Caroline is in Buckinghamshire. Good morning. Good morning, David and Renee. Good morning. morning. How can we help? Um, I'm, I'm just calling. I don't know where else to go to. I've had a series of um, ear infections, and the last one was finally, well, it, it was diagnosed in a hospital. Um, I can't get to see my doctor. And um, for the last two and a half weeks, I've got ringing in my ears, and I'm absolutely terrified that it's going to stay. And um, I still can't get to see my doctor. And the, there's a queue apparently for the ENT, which is about yeah. two years long, as you told. So okay, I'm, I'm so just panicking. Let me just, no, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Let's see if we can just give you some help in between. Um, is the ringing in both ears? No, just my left ear. Okay, if the ringing is only in your left ear, then you do need to pick up the phone to your GP and get an emergency appointment because that's. Why can't you? I, they won't see anybody. They only deal with us over the phone. I cannot. I've been trying since October to get okay. to my doctor. Okay, so they do have to mm. um, actually refer certain patients under what's called a two week wait. And they need to either get you an urgent MRI of your head, which in our surgery, if we do it to one of our private providers, we can get within about a week. Or they need to refer you to ENT under what's called a two-week wait referral because you've only got ringing in one ear. But what I'm going to say is this. It most likely isn't something bad. So have you had a series of colds? We're in winter. No, I haven't had a cold but for a long time. But you have had ear infections. Ear infections. Mm. Right, but an ear infection is a cold because it's an upper respiratory tract infection. So it may just be that what you've got is some congestion on that side, which is causing the tinnitus and making you hear it. So I would go to the chemist and get some Beccanese nasal spray, which is a steroid, mm -hmm. which can help just calm down the inflammation in your nose, which will affect your ear eventually. And you could also try a Sudafed tablet. Don't use the Sudafed sprays, they're really bad. But a Sudafed tablet, if you take that Sudafed tablet and your ringing tones down a bit, it gets a bit better, then you've got your answer. It's congestion. Um, I have only, I've got so many medications that I'm on. I'm on beta blockers and I'm on uh, sertraline. I, I've, give, I've been given diazepam. I'm on antibiotics, which finished today, but my ear is still sore. 
I, I'm just I, I'm just afraid to take anything else so, in case. It... Sure. Um, ju just going on to Renee's point, in terms of trying to get that appointment, which I think is is incredibly valid. What about if if An they email. won't pick up the yes if they won't pick up the phone? What about going down to the surgery and saying I want I, an urgent appointment? They, they what refuse. Happens? They they absolutely refuse. They turn you away and tell you to call in the morning. They won't even let one 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 book me in. One one one. And what happens if you call? Refuse. Is that an eight o'clock in the morning scramble thing? I call at half eight. I get into a queue immediately. And when they call me back about an hour later, all the slots are all gone. And, and, and what time do the lines... Email. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous, the whole thing. The um, lines open at half eight. Half eight. Why don't you get the email, the surgery email, and email them and say that you spoke to um, another doctor about mm. unilateral tinnitus and she suggested you needed an urgent referral to ENT? I, I, I just... I just... I... I uh, I've actually begun to look for private health care and I did have an appointment for Wednesday evening coming up, but I am panicking so sure. much. Don't panic. Uh, don't, don't panic, no, but Renee's... No, it's not that. It's not that. It's, it's, it's about an, an hour away and I'm panicking so much that I can't drive there. I've tried the last two weekends to find the place. OK. And I'm panicking so much I can't uh, drive. And, and, and we can hear that in your voice. I think what Renee is saying is right. So send an email because then it's actually evidence and, and a paper trail. Mention another two. Say, Say doctors. that you've talked to two doctors that you need this urgent referral. Rene said unilateral. That means on one side, and do that in the interim. If you, if that is what you want to do, you can get a private appointment if that is what you want and you want to pay. I don't know what a private appointment is now. Two twenty-five. Wow. Okay. If if that sorts out the problem and you have the money, that is another way to do it. But I do think the GP has a responsibility to see you. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really the advice that we can give. I want to stress, please don't panic. It most likely is some congestion, some eustachian tube dysfunction. It really is. Common things are common. Rare things are unlikely. So please, send an email. Say you've spoken to us. You need an urgent appointment. Try the steroid nasal spray. That's not going to interfere with your, interfere with your beta blockers or anything else. Don't do the Sudafed right now because of the interactions, but do the steroid nasal spray and see how you get on. And also just remember, when you do get that appointment, just get someone to take you. Well, Don't what drive. Does mean, what does it mean when it moves over to the other ear sometimes? Because sometimes it's in the middle of my head. Uh, oh. That's good. It's mostly, yeah, it's good. It's mostly in my left ear, but, it's, but sometimes it can be right. in the middle of my head. What does that mean? That just means that you've got lots of congestion, both sides, but one more than another. And so that's pointing back to the infection It side. is, and it's actually good. It's better. Okay. So I, I would say probably you're going to need some of those, cons those conservative treatments, the one you can get over the counter if your GP won't give them. I really wouldn't panic. It sounds like something we see all of the time in the winter, but obviously we can't be sure because we're sitting here and you're not in front of us. So I, I would know. send that email to your GP. Has that helped? I, I, did, I did go to the pharmacist. And they gave me automized, but that only cleared away the, the infections, but it didn't actually stop the ringing. Yeah, and the other thing is, is if you're getting automized treats, um, a titus externa, which is an infection of your outer ear canal, and it can be terrible. I always say to people that if they're prone to this and they're getting it repeatedly, a tiny yes. bit of steroid cream in the drawer so that when you feel that first itch or pain, whatever it is, you put that in to calm it down and stop it developing. Okay. 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 And, and, and really important, don't panic. And as Rene said, and it's a really good maxim, common things occur commonly. Thank you for Thank your call. You. Keep all of those coming in. I've got so many. Just very quickly on this, Chris in Newbury, or Chris, um, good morning, uh, says, um, interesting, my wife woke up with ringing and deafness in one ear. Since it happened, she knows of four other people who've had the same thing. It, it seems to be around. The ENT consultant said this could be COVID. Be any it, well, and, and we don't know because it could be any infection and COVID is also infection. changing and manifesting and different symptoms appear from this newer Absolutely. strains of COVID. Look, but, any but the infection. point is it's any infection, yeah. isn't it? And, and, and as you say, moving from one side to the other actually makes it sound less serious than, than just being on one side. Keep all of those coming in, please. I, you should see how many have come in already, but <laughs> keep all of those coming in. Uh, after the break, we're going to be opening our Sunday surgery doors. We're going to be talking about fasting. Now, fasting has been talked about for a long time, various health benefits for that. The Prime Minister believes in fasting. What is the truth about fasting? Is it actually good for us? This is Talk TV.
A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Well. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent, that's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? <laughs> What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, miss it. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, uh? it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> There are no banners calling for and the they will release not of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no Hamas. banners, Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march not, when no, it comes to no, Hamas. No, sorry, no, I'm yeah. sorry, I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't. Good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth? is going on in the House of Commons. I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. All right, Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. If Richard Soon actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised by a special right. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> your <laughs> mind. <laughs> it's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to Talk Today with me, David Bull. Joining me, Dr. Renny Hunderkamp. Uh, it's Sunday, so it's Sunday surgery, Sunday problems. Uh, lots of things. M so many messages uh, coming in as well. Renny, very quickly, is there anything I can eat or do to help me get pregnant? I'm 35 years old. We're trying for my first baby. We had a chemical pregnancy at the end of last year. We are hoping to try again this month. Great question. No, so I th uh, this is a really interesting question and it's really uh, one obviously I get to deal with all of the time. The first thing is, is that you ha if you have a fairly regular cycle, you need to have sex between about days 7 and 23 every four days. Don't do um, ovulation sticks. There is no evidence that they increase <laughs> pregnancy rates, but they do increase stress. I was about to say anxiety. Anxiety. The biggest barrier to being pregnant, and this is really hard for me to say to pregnant women, and I always say that, I always couch it, the biggest barrier to being pregnant is stress. Yeah. We see often women that have gone through rounds of IVF, not got pregnant, settled with the fact that they will never be mothers, fall pregnant, naturally. Mm. The stress is off. So, have acupuncture to calm, yoga, don't do ovulation sticks, and just have sex every four for three to four days because sperm can hang around for up to seven days which I know is a fairly gross thing mm. to think about and you it just needs to be there when the egg is ovulated it's the egg that doesn't hang around long 12 hours mm, it's not long at all um, a lot of people commenting on that story about test tube testicles Go on. Um, no well they're growing them in a dish um, <laughs> hi David and Renny Graham from Black Rock in Cornwall says oh what a fantastic show growing new testicles I recommend they should do that and send them to the House of Commons <laughs> I, thought, I, 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 I thought that was very funny and someone else said surely this is test tubicles 
Oh, um, it's good. Yeah, very good. They're on fire this morning. Lots of other messages. Um, this is um, Mel. Good morning to the lovely doctors. Some medical advice, please. I've just lost my mum oh. from cholangiocarcinoma. She passed away on the 2nd of February. She lived seven weeks from, di seven weeks from diagnosis. And she was young, just 73. Now, my problem is I've been diagnosed with cervical myelopathy with spinal cord compression in C5-6, and I've had this several times before. This is my seventh spinal fusion surgery. Now, my consultation, I have the best surgeon, but he's not really a people person, doesn't really explain it. Um, I'm concerned about having any more surgery because I get scar tissue, which you will. Yeah. I just want to put this off because of what happens and be sensible. I'd rather be alive and paralysed than dead. I think, I think those concerns actually are valid, aren't they? Repeated multiple surgeries. Yes. And we often see this. We often see when you have one fusion, that leads to an exfusion. A fusion is when they join two of the vertebrae together. But then what happens is you then need a fusion to the one above and then the one below, yeah. and so it goes on and your movement is limited. I think this is the important thing. We don't know, obviously, your particular MRI, MRI scan and how it's looking. If you can... Or the extent of pain. Or the extent of mm. pain. If you can do um, specialised physio to build up the muscles around the vertebrae to support them, um, the flares will come and go and you'll have some periods in between which should be better. But I'm going to couch it with, we don't know the extent of the compression here. And you mentioned I'd rather be alive than and paralysed than dead. But you know, that's something that somebody needs to weigh up with you to yeah. work out exactly what the risk is, and we don't know that today. Oh, yeah. But certainly, when you've got back pain, neck pain, and I've had the neck pain, it's absolutely horrific. Generally goes in periods of about six to eight weeks before it resolves. Um, you can do exercise in between to strengthen all of those muscles around the vertebrae. Very good indeed. Right, let's move on. It's time for Sunday surgery. Dr. David Bull's Sunday Surgery. Now, we've spoken a lot about fasting. We see it as a faddish trait by, carried out by many celebrities, politicians and the like. Well, a diet that mimics the effect of fasting without starving yourself maybe can extend your life by many years, according to a new study. Yeah, researchers found that people who follow this fasting-mimicking diet, or FMD, for five days a month reduce their biological age by over two years on average. They also found in various tests, as a result, they had lower risk of diabetes, of heart disease and stroke based on what we call biomarkers in, this, uh, in their blood. Really interesting if that is true. Let's find out more. Dr Sarah Berry joins us now, nutritional sciences researcher at King's College University in London and also chief scientist at Zoe. Good morning to you. Morning. So come on then, tell us all about fasting and this, and, and in particular this, this fasting mimicking diet. Yeah, so fasting has grown in popularity because it's a really simple strategy to improve your health. Uh, we know that by fasting, whether it's practicing what we call time restricted eating, where you actually fast overnight for a longer period and eat in the day for a shorter period, or the kind of fasting that you've talked about from this other study where people eat less for a number of days and then might have a day where they eat a large amount of food. What that means is that often unintentionally, without trying, we reduce obviously our calorie intake. But also by fasting at certain times of the day, it also means that we eat in line with our biological clock, which can improve our overall metabolic health. And that, that is fascinating because I think often we just ignore our biological clock. So with, with this, this FMD diet, this fasting mimicking diet, it involved eating around, a f uh, around fewer than a thousand calories made up of low fat foods, soups, energy drinks and supplements. It's said to trick the body into thinking it is fasting, releasing enzymes and chemicals into the body that are linked to longevity. We, particularly not just this country, but around the world, we, we, we've programmed ourselves to believe that we eat three meals a day and they're at these particular times. And actually, that's not how your body works. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also not how many of us eat now. So we have some recent research from our Zoe Predict studies that shows that actually people eat on average five times to six times over the day. 
nearly a quarter of our energy comes from snacks, not from main meals. But really importantly, what we're doing is typically eating quite late into the evening. So we know from our research that 50% of people are snacking after 6 p.m. and 30% of people snack after 9 p.m. Now, this is where problems arise because this means that we're eating out of sync with that body clock. And this is where fasting can be beneficial. So rather than doing extreme fasting or having you know, particular days where you're really reducing your energy intake, a really effective way that you could potentially improve your health is by doing a kind of fasting called time-restricted eating. And this is the kind of fasting we've been looking at. And with time-restricted eating, all this means is that you actually eat all of your food within a slightly smaller window. So you eat all of your food typically within maybe a 10 hour window. So if you have your breakfast at eight, you have your last meal at six o'clock. And what this means is you're having enough period overnight where you're fasting and your various cells are having a bit of a rest that are normally busily metabolizing all your food. But what it also means is by stopping eating by six or even eight o'clock in the evening, you're eating in tune with your body clock. And that's what's really important, is trying not to be eating late into the night. And that's where fasting, we think, becomes really beneficial, as well as reducing your energy intake, actually by eating in tune with your body clock and not eating after eight o'clock in the evening. We see additional benefits regardless of your energy intake. Both Renny and I looked at each other when you said, what was that, 25% of your calorific intake is yeah. snacks? Both of us were totally shocked by that. Yeah, do you know, our study's shown this, and it, actually lots of other studies have shown this as well, that in the UK, a quarter of our calories comes from snacks. And we actually did some really interesting research on this to look at how important is snacking itself on our health, i.e. if we're constantly grazing on food, is that bad for it, us per se, or is it about the types of snacks that we're having? And what we found was that as long as you're snacking on healthy foods, there doesn't seem to be an unfavorable effect. On your health if you're snacking on unhealthy foods though that's where you have the problem and what we find is in our own research that nearly 50 percent of people that have really healthy main meals actually have really unhealthy snacks and the biggest problem is that snacking after 9 p.m at night mm. Really I, it is really interesting i i want to go on and talk about this fmd the cycles here yeah. but just before we do that um I was always taught, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper. Is there credence in that? Yes, I believe so. So there's good evidence to show that all the cells in our body have this body clock, and they're, they're more tuned in a very simple way to process food better in the morning. So that means if you have carbohydrates in the morning, you process them better than if you have carbohydrates later in the day. Also, our hunger and our fullness signals are very different in the morning to the afternoon. So a meal that might make you very full in the morning would make you less full later in the day. And so by having more of your calories earlier in the day, what the evidence shows from many clinical trials is, firstly, you'll feel less hungry the next day. Secondly, you'll also have improved metabolic health. So you'll have improved insulin sensitivity, lower inflammation, better blood pressure, um, and lower blood cholesterol as well. So interesting. So I changed my diet and I now have porridge every morning and a banana and some a little bit of honey and some fruit and stuff like that. And I do exactly that. I'm then not hungry at all. And obviously my, my life is a bit ridiculous having breakfast at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, Dr. Rene, you, you were surprised by some of that. I, I wasn't surprised, but just for me, that doesn't work. If I have Why breakfast... Why doesn't it work? Right, so I don't have breakfast. Why? I don't breakfast eat, like a king. I don't eat until about one o'clock every day and if I have breakfast I'm starving whereas the way I eat I'm never hungry you know this I said I to you I'm never hungry Sa Sarah is Rene an alien <laughs> no we are all so different and this is uh, an area that we've been doing a lot of research at Zoe but we find that there's a 20-fold difference in how everyone responds to different foods um, and so we are unique and we have what's called the chronotype some of us are morning chronotypes and some of us are <laughs> afternoon or evening chronotypes. <laughs> morning chronotypes tend to be those typical people that will process their food better in the morning. So Rene is someone that's probably maybe an afternoon or evening chronotype, and you should eat in tune with what your body's telling you. Our bodies are really clever at telling us yes. when they're hungry, when they're full. And so whilst in general, I do believe in breakfast like a king, etc. 
I do think listen to your body. If you're not hungry in the morning, don't make yourself eat that breakfast. What's really interesting, Sarah, is what I also do is I'm actually not a meal person. I graze. So from one o'clock, yeah. I graze. I graze on nuts, on sardines, on, you know, raw food, Sounds tomatoes. Sounds dreadful. But what worries me about that <laughs> is that am I just constantly getting my body to spill out insulin because I'm constantly grazing on that food or is it OK? Yeah, so there has been research to look at that, to look at people who are grazers like you. So having constant small increments in insulin. So insulin increases after you eat food in order to allow you to process and, mm. and remove the glucose, the blood sugar that circulates um, after eating that food. And there's research that's looked at, okay, is it better to have these big spikes after having a big meal or is it better to have these gradual increases? There's no clear answer on that, but what we do know from our own research is that as long as you're eating healthy snacks, even if they're inducing continuous small increases in insulin, there doesn't seem to be any unfavourable impact. So th there was also in this study, they looked at your immune system. They looked at something called the lymphoid to myeloid ratio, looking at the youthful immune system. It seems that there are benefits to fasting for our immune systems as well. Yeah, so this is a really exciting area of emerging evidence and there's lots of work looking at this in relation, for example, to cancer mm. um, and to the um, how well chemotherapy drugs work. It's very much a kind of watch this space. Um, so the kind of results like this coming out about the immune system, I think we need to see how they play out in real life. But there is some evidence emerging now that combining fasting, but not extreme fasting, time-restricted eating fasting that we've talked about alongside chemotherapy may, for some people, and I do caution it with may because I think we need to see really clear evidence for this, mm. may improve how effective the, the chemotherapy and more, more so the tolerance because of the effect having that fast period has on all of these different cells that are involved in our immune response mm. and in inflammation and in oxidative stress. And, and all, the, all those cells that go around clearing up bad cells, all the ones that we don't want. So, I mean, that it's, it's fascinating. Very quickly, and I, I will wrap now. <laughs> I like David bringing it back to reality here. Hi, Doctor's great show. Can I drink anything after six o'clock? So, there's something called the clean fast or the dirty fast. <laughs> Um, the, the, the dirty fast is the one where you can have, you know, like uh, herbal teas, black tea, black coffee, but it mustn't have any kind of nutrients in it that bring us energy. So we wouldn't be able to have milk, etc. cetera. Mm. You certainly wouldn't be allowed to drink alcohol oh. um, uh, <laughs> at all. So the clean fast is where you literally just have water. You have nothing mm. else other than water. The dirty fast is where you allow yourself maybe a, a black tea, a herbal tea or a black coffee. Ooh. <laughs> uh, really interesting though thank you so much thank for joining you. us this morning that uh, Dr Sarah Berry there nutritional sciences researcher at King's College University in London and chief scientist at uh, Zoe I'm off to have some black tea you want dirty dirty uh, I want dirty dirty including the dirty martini uh, right that was today's Sunday Surgery Dr David Bull's Sunday Surgery <laughs> Oh, I'm punch drunk. I'm almost on holiday. Uh, time, 9.43. After the break, more of your medical ailments. If you have something you want to talk about, do get in touch, please. You know how to do that. This is Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks. It said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. 
Well, it will be your problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. And they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, <is it? laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> there are no banners calling for and the re release of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no banners, Hamas. Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march when we no, can't no, say them on that. Sorry, no. I'm yeah. sorry. I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you no, can't. Like, good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth is going on in the House of Commons? I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right, Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. Richard Soon actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised you're by a special counsel. Right. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh. what? <laughs> your your mind. <laughs> it's not our minds, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Welcome back to the final part of... How did that happen? Uh, final part of Talk Today here um, on Talk TV. Uh, time 9.46 now, Sunday, February the 25th. Fasting. I knew this would excite everyone. Uh, Kar Karin says, uh, good morning to you. I've been fasting for over 35 years. I'm never ill. The last time I had a cold was 40 years ago. Oh, I want your immune system. So do you want to borrow I. my five-year-old? Yes, or possibly don't go on the tube or live in London. Uh, Leighton says, I agree with Rene. If I eat breakfast, I'm hungry all yeah. day and I snack constantly. But this, but chronotypes, as we heard, yeah. differing people, differing things. I was just saying, since I started eating a proper breakfast, which I was told to do as a child, which I refused to do, but anyway, ever since I have done that, I've lost weight, and actually I'm much trimmer eating breakfast than I was when I didn't. I do insist that Alice has breakfast. Well, why? She might have your chronotype. Because she needs to get through a school day where she's yeah. too busy doing this well, to eat. Well, and interestingly, you know, with the, with children who don't have breakfast and this the, the, the issues focus. over that and breakfast, they don't focus yeah. and they're disruptive. So it's really important that children have that. Uh, this one says, uh, Hi, doctors. I'm 69 years old. I've been fasting for 10 years. I eat between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Wow. I have more energy. I'm up at 5.30 and I haven't seen a doctor in years. Really interesting. Um, let me just read this one. Uh, Barry in Warrington. Good morning, doctors. Please, can you raise awareness for the 29th of February? Uh, that is Rare Disease Day. One in 17 people will be affected by a rare disease in their life. 75% of those are children. There are over 350 million people worldwide with rare diseases. I have one called birdshot uveitis. It's an HLA A29 mm. uveitis. Interesting. Well, there you are, Barry. Thank you very much indeed. And that's quite interesting because uveitis often comes with the inflammatory bowel diseases. Yes. And those are the HLA diseases. Mm. Mm, interesting. Thank you very much indeed for that. Keep all of those coming in. Let's talk to Keith now, who is in Shropshire. Good morning. Yeah, morning. Morning, morning. What would you like yeah. to talk about? Good morning. Um, yeah, good morning, Mary. Um, I suffer from um, kidney stones and um, for the past 15 years. Had a couple of operations removing them. Yeah. Um, but they keep coming back. Um Symptoms usually are like a flu or, you know, um, symptoms, backache, neckache, mm. feverish. Um, and I'm currently uh, receiving treatment through local hospital. Um, my ex-wife um, saw an article um, that um, iodine um, might be suitable for treating kidney stones. So I've actually been taking it for the last six, seven months. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I haven't had any problems. And how since. often do you normally get them? The kidney stones? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I've got them at the moment um, in both kidneys. But they're not causing you any, any oh, issues? They they were. I'd, I've got one in the right kidney that's been particular, and the, and the kidney function on that side is very low. Mm -hmm. right. um, but I've got them in both kidneys at the moment, and they're, they're under observation, but um, I'm still waiting uh, to, to go back into, into the hospital for further examination. Um, but the, the, taking these iodine tablets has stopped all the um, symptoms of the backache. Right. Um, I mean, my right kidney also felt like, because um, that's the worst one, like somebody was actually got their hand on it and gently squeezing yeah. it. I mean, um, this is this is a seems to have good. It. Well, that's great. It's great, and it's something I'll look up afterwards because it's not something I've heard about. Sometimes people take iodine for thyroid health, obviously, because mm. the the thyroid needs iodine for that. I think what's really interesting is kidney stones is something that is suffered by many, many people, and I'm sure you can vouch for this. When they get infected or they're really problematic. The pain is excruciating. Mm. I have seen grown men writhing around. It's meant to be the, the worst floor. pain, isn't it? Yeah, just absolutely awful. Unfortunately, if you've had kidney stones, you're more likely to carry on getting them and get them again. If you're inactive or bed bound, if you've got a family history, or if you had your first kidney stone before the age of 25, you're more likely to get them recurrently. Why? Because of a genetic link? Yeah, maybe. So, mm. And you need to avoid certain medications like aspirin, antacids, some antibiotics. So there are lots of self-help things that you can do, but maybe you found one that we don't yeah, yet know about. Loving, and I'll have a look. Loving that, Keith. Thank you very yeah, much indeed. I, 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 Sorry, I carry on. Get any pain. Yeah, but I don't get any pain. Well, that's great, isn't it? I, I'm, I'm not riding on the floor. Uh, with pain which some people can Oh, I get. see. Yeah. When you get your stones and when they uh, they become inflamed. You get the fever and yeah. the signs of infection. I get the fever, yeah. And sometimes they can infect the um, the bladder and what have you. Yeah. Um, so you get... Uh, I've been on antibiotics for that. Yeah. Um, but I don't get raging pain. Um, um, that's, that's never been a, um, a symptom that I've had. It's good. also really good to hear that you're still talking to your ex-wife. <laughs> thank you, Keith. Uh, thank you, Rene, for that. Uh, bringing it down to ground. Uh, Ewan is in Doncaster. Oh, Doncaster. I was there yesterday. Uh, good morning. 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 How is sunny Donny? Uh, it's not sunny. Oh, it was oh. yesterday. Let me tell you, it was actually really was. nice yesterday. Yeah, it wasn't bad yesterday. Yeah. What, what would you like to talk about? Um, I have uh, a lot of problems sleeping, especially with snoring and uh, restless legs. Oh, um, and restless legs, wow. Right. Yeah, um, I have problems keeping do, my Do you just want to night. explain to people what restless legs is and how it manifests? What symptoms do you uh, have? So I raise my legs while I'm sleeping uh, in bed and then slowly just jerk them down, um, keeping my husband awake and uh, obviously just moving them a lot. And mm. uh, my legs hurt in the morning. Uh, I mean, I've had it since I was a kid. Um, when I used to share my bed with my parents, like when I was younger, I used mm. to keep them in the back. <laughs> Right. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I have re like really, really bad problems with breathing while I sleep. Like I stop breathing. Um, so that's I've been to the doctors. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> um, I, I got referred to the hospital. And they tested my blood oxygen while I was sleeping, and they didn't find anything. Okay, so that's a good so, sign. Yeah, but what scared me was I uh, woke myself up choking on my tongue because mm -hmm. uh, obviously I, I just. I feel like I've had no sleep because I can't yeah, I'm breathe. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure. So, the, like that, but, so I don't know what to try. Okay, so there are a few few questions I have to ask you first. Are you overweight? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say overweight. Um, I'm five eight. I'm around about twelve thirteen stone. Okay, so that probably I'm, I'm not overweight. That your BMI is probably a little bit higher than twenty five. I would say. Yeah, probably. Okay, mm. so you probably could lose a little bit of weight, which always helps with sleep apnea. The reason for that is it's not just talking about weight, is that when we're sleeping, we lose the voluntary control of the muscles in our neck, of course, because we d lose all of our voluntary control when we're asleep. So then any weight that you're carrying actually <coughs> presses down on the windpipe and compresses it. Then you actually start losing your oxygen levels and obviously you have to gasp for breath, which is what you're experiencing. Yeah. Um, but there are a couple of things that you can do. There's a very good book, um, I can't remember the writer, Nestor springs to mind, called Breathe, that's worth okay. a read. Um, and he talks about sleep and how important it is to breathe. He also talks about mouth taping. 
So okay. actually taping your mouth at night... So you become an obligate nasal breather. So you can't breathe through your mouth. It helps snoring. It helps more continuous sleep. I've tried it. It is quite good. My does mother, it not feel strange? It, initially, it does feel a bit strange. And obviously, you've got to be able to breathe through your nose in order to do that. Um, yeah. But my mum now swears by it. She said it's changed her life. And there's a lot written on this. So it might be worth looking at that. Then mm. there are obviously the old-fashioned techniques of stitching a tennis ball in the back of your pyjama so you can't sleep on your back. Mm. Things like that. Mm. Yes, so that's yeah, a good one. Have, have you tried that I with have... a tennis ball on the pyjama on the back or whatever you wear in bed? So it basically... No, I... Like... Well... I got a different pillow. Um, oh, did you? Could raise my, like the back of my neck and stuff like that. But I've tried like mouthpieces, I've tried uh, electronic... And do you uh, tend to pieces. sleep on your back then the whole time? Uh, no, I, I'll, I'll sleep on my side and then naturally just move to my back. Yeah. yeah. So that's where the tennis ball comes in because it basically you then move over, the tennis ball hurts you and then yeah. you move back onto your side. Yeah, I don't know I could try that. You could try that, and I've seen that work, actually. Yes, of course, because people, some people, most people only snore when they're on their back again because, because of this Because all the floppy falling structures down. that Have a look backwards. at that book. It's called Breathe. Um, Breathe. Think about mouth taping, tennis ball at the I'll back. I'll try that, <laughs> yeah. And a bit of weight. Yeah, interestingly, yeah, very, just whilst you're there, someone said, what about your B12 levels? Someone here had restless legs, took B12? Yes, actually, that's a really valid point. So restless legs often is associated with sorts yes. and B12. And so that you should check all of those. Yeah, go and get, some bloods. Yeah, get, go and get some, blood. some bloods done. Where we've cut down our sorts so dramatically trying to help our blood pressure, we've then increased things like restless legs. So, oh, okay. yeah, sort, mm, sort intake. Mm. Now, oh, look at that. Thank yeah, you. do, because also, um, I think it's my mum who gets terrible crap and then that seems to be relief using yes, with salt completely uh, and that runs in the family as well and I find for me as well and I get it that salt helps yeah. so you oh, are what you, you eat basically <laughs> uh, well good luck with all of that I hope you, uh, you get some good sleep as well yeah hopefully good yeah luck. yeah Thanks good, for the call. good luck with all of that um, thank yes you. thank you very uh, much for the call lots and lots of other messages coming in um, I was just uh, quite a lot about restless legs as well. It, it, I don't know how common restless legs is. Reasonably, I mean, I do see it in GP. Y yeah, um, it, it's a, it's a terrible condition and also very difficult for people if uh, if you have a partner oh, and of course you're kicking them all but through. But it's the not night. even that. It's absolutely debilitating for people that suffer from it. Oh, absolutely. They don't sleep. They're in pain. They're they're miserable, and it's almost a self fulfilling prophecy because you feel so down because you haven't slept. Yes, exactly. Just very quickly. Hello, um, I'm a sixty year old male. I've got phimosis. It has a lot. It's gotten a lot worse. I'm in pain when I urinate. It's very itchy and painful. The foreskin has almost closed over. Please help me. What can I do? Phimosis is awful. Okay, phimosis is awful. Um, quite often we see it in young children, obviously. Steroid cream, sometimes a steroid cream. But if it's closed over completely, or, well, I mean, obviously, operation. Well, that needs specialist help. Yes. But obviously, some of the early treatments are steroid cream, sometimes antibiotics if it's infected, then surgeons. Super, thank you very much indeed, Dr. Rennie. What a lovely segue to welcome to Hannah. <laughs> uh, hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you? So you're, you're doing the next show. I am, it's good to be back. Yeah, lovely to see We've you, got actually. A, a lot we're going to cover today. I'm not surprised. As, are you as talking about Lee Anderson by any chance? How on earth did you guess well, that that might be one of our topics well, of discussion today? Has the Conservative Party lost complete control? I couldn't possibly comment. No, well, of course that's why I'm asking. Because you're going to have to tune in between oh, the hours of 10 and 1, David, to Very out. good. Well, of course, you've got Nigel Farage saying Lee can come to Reform UK. Absolutely. It's going to be an interesting one, isn't it? It is. What else have you got? Well, we're going to be asking... She's not taking uh, the bait. Never. No. I never do. I tried really hard. <laughs> well, we're going to be asking our viewers and listeners if they were Chancellor for a day on the day of the budget, what would they most like to see in that budget? What would they do? Which would be an interesting one. Obviously, we've seen some, uh, some interesting proposals that have been published this week that I know we can speak not of, but we will be uh, <laughs> talking a little bit about that. A little bit about Shemima Begum as well. Is it okay to to get give away someone's citizenship no. if they? Uh, I Oh, see, see, I, I think I disagree with you. <laughs> I disagree. I'm yeah, on your side. Yeah. Yes, no. Because, she, anyway, we discussed it yesterday. But yeah, yes. but we will be getting on to that subject. Um, and lots more as well. So it's definitely worth sticking with me, tuning in from 10 till 1 and uh, getting Sounds involved fun. in our discussion. Fantastic. Well, 